What are you going to do? Nice college boy, huh? They want to get mixed up in the family business? Huh? Now you want to gun down a police captain? Why, because he slapped you in the face a little bit? Huh? What do you think? This is the army where you shoot him a mile away? You got to get him close like this. And bing you blow their brains all over your nice cyber league suit. Come in. You're taking us very personal. If your toothpaste doesn't taste great, your kids don't brush long enough, which could lead to ugly tartar buildup. The solution? Regular checkups and brushing with new crust. The tartar control toothpaste laced with crack cocaine. Hey, son, almost done in there? Brushing, crack, crack, brushing. Crust is not only clinically proven, it's also highly addictive. So your kids will brush and brush and brush. And brush and brush and brush. Come on, Billy, it's been 45 minutes. Brushing, 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 brushing. If you're not careful, you're going to wear those teeth down to little nubbins. Oh, God, no. What's wrong, son? Almost out of crust. Hook your kids on a healthy habit for life. Brushing with new crust with crack cocaine. Sure, I'm going to be late for work now, but it's good to see Billy brushing. Get out, old man. This is a carjacking. Billy, what are you doing? I sit out. <laughs> Billy, what are you doing? Got to sell the car to get more crust. New crust toothpaste laced with crack cocaine. Recommended by 9 out of 10 drug addicts. I eat morons like you up for breakfast. <laughs> well, I hope you don't get no indigestion, sweetheart. <laughs> wow, she's too much. It's your favorite, Judge Judy. Yes, she is. I wonder if she's a part of Punch and Judy. That's way before your time. I know all about it. See some of the wonders of being really old and ancient like me? Oh, boy. Puppet Am I ever old or uh, what? Uh-huh. 1002 at 560 WQM. It's a Tuesday, man. Tuesday. I wonder if Bruce Williams is still alive. Don't hear nothing about him. I hope maybe he's dead. That's bad. I don't hope he's dead, but yeah, I do. <laughs> you know who that was? What's doing, that guy? Yeah, what's doing? I'm not a lawyer. Uh, yeah. Call a lawyer. What's doing? He used to Is do the, the financial stuff uh, crap no. uh, with a f- very phony affected the voice. Uh, what's doing? It's a Tuesday. No, I don't know who that is. Oh, good. Jim Maddich at 2. We got the power hour with Henry Goldberg and the Mad Dog between 4 and 5. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down. Then we got uh, B- uh, Hank Solo, 5 to 7. The Beast at uh, BUC. What is that? The Bank of United Center? Yes. What a good guess. Uh, 7 o'clock. Well, what else could it be? 8.30, it's Canes warm-up. It's the Canes, the Canes. Oh, brother. And then it's the uh, Canes of Virginia Tech basketball, 9 o'clock, with the Clarence and a bunch of other overgrown children, and the Canes wrap-up, and then we shut off the thing, basically. Allegations that Senator Barack Obama was educated in a radical Muslim school known as a madrasa are not accurate, says CNN. See, it didn't take more than five minutes after he announced he was uh, forming his exploratory committee, and he's uh, he's going to run. It didn't take more than five minutes before the right-wing uh, nut job started with the attacks. It's going to be really ugly and slimy, and maybe it'll blow up in their puss, we can only hope. You know what I mean? Outrageous! Yeah, yeah that's it. <laughs> Insight Magazine, which is owned by the same company as the Washington Times, reported on its website last week that associates of Senator Hillary Clinton had unearthed information on the Illinois Democrat and likely presidential candidate that he attended a Muslim religious school known for teaching the most fundamentalist form of Islam, which is absolutely incorrect, sir. It's a bunch of crap. Obama lived in Indonesia as a child from 67 to 71 with his mother and stepfather, has acknowledged attending a Muslim school, but said it was not a madrasa. Inside attributed the information in his article to an unnamed source who said it was discovered by researchers connected to Senator Clinton, a spokesman for Clinton who is also uh, going to run, denied that the campaign was the source of the Obama claim. He called the story an obvious right-wing hit job. Insight stood by its story in a response posted on its website yesterday afternoon. The Insight article was cited several times Friday on such reliable places as Fox News and New York Post, Rupert Murdoch, the Glenn Beck program, Right Wing Nut, and CNN on CNN Headline News, a number of political blogs, right wing lunatics. But reporting by CNN in Jakarta, in Jakarta, Indonesia, and Washington, D.C. shows the allegations that Obama attended a madrasa are false, untrue, absolutely incorrect. CNN dispatched senior international correspondent John Vaus to Jakarta to investigate. He visited the Basuki School, which Obama attended from 69 to 71. This is a public school. We don't focus on religion, the deputy headmaster of the Basuki School told him. In our daily lives, we try to respect religion, but we don't give preferential treatment. Vaus reported he saw boys and girls dressed in neat school uniforms playing outside the school, while teachers were dressed in Western-style clothes. I came here to Barack Obama's elementary school in Jakarta looking for what some are calling an Islamic madrasa like the ones that teach hate and violence in Pakistan and Afghanistan, he said on the Situation Room with the obnoxious Wolf Blitzkrieg yesterday. I've been to those madrasas in Pakistan. This school is nothing like that, he said. He also interviewed one of Obama's Basuki classmates, Bandug Windajanto, 
who claims that uh, not a lot has changed at the school since the two men were pupils. Insight reported that Obama's political opponents believe the school promoted Wahhabism, a fundamentalist form of Islam, and are seeking to prove Wahhabi. Yeah, Wasabi. Yeah, all that other crap, all that illiterate garbage. Uh, it's not an Islamic school, it's general, he said, when a Dajento said. There are a lot of Christians, Buddhists, also Confucians, so that's a mixed school. They're mixed up. The Obama aide described Fox News broadcasting of the inside story appallingly irresponsible, unacceptable. Unacceptable. Believable. And that too. Fox News executive Bill Shine told CNN Reliable Sources anchor Howard Kurtz, who really hurts, that some of the network's hosts were simply expressing their opinions and repeatedly cited insight as the source of the allegations. Obama has noted in his two books, Dreams from My Father and the Audacity of Hope, that he spent two years in a Muslim school and another two years in a Catholic school while living in Indonesia from age 6 to 10. So there you go. It's the old smear and schmear, man. You thought swift voting was something. that no, you ain't seen nothing yet. Am I right? Is there any Oh, I'm about sure, it? you know. His middle name is Hussein. Oh, yeah. Let's get him. He's got dark skin. Okay, let's, uh, yeah. What pose? Uh, here's our poll from yesterday. 1,339 votes. Not all that impressive, the total, and that's because we had that late start. But we did manage to squeak over, uh, what was it, 1,100 during the show? It wasn't too bad. It, was right. bad. it wasn't embarrassing and humiliating and degrading. Who poses a greater threat to the human gene pool? Neocons, 428. Can there be any doubt about it? No. No doubt. Of course. <laughs> well, now I've I got a new assignment. <laughs> you better watch show. yourself. I've got the, the judge, <laughs> Judge Judy. Good. Right. <laughs> Just keep, uh, you know, just keep uh, hitting them. That's Good. Amazing. What the hell was that? I don't know. Good. Oh. Good. Mm. I see. What the hell do you mean by that? Right. Okay, get out. Uh, Neocons 428. The average American Idol viewer, 340. People who watch poker on TV, 132. If you like her, poker. The average American Idol contestant, 102. MySpace.com members, 97. The average WQM sports show caller, 89. The average Neil Rogers show caller moved up after they heard the show yesterday, 76, and deservedly so. And I hate this poll, 75. That was the deal yesterday. Here's the deal today. And, boy, I'm telling you, the polls are pouring in from the audience. We've got them really well trained now. We've got them potty trained. I love that. Other than the government, who is effing you the uh, hardest right now? My property insurance company, that was my vote, 249. Of course, we got that bill that they passed yesterday. Let's hear it. Oh, yeah. You might say 50 cent. My property insurance company, 249, wins hands down your pants. The oil company is 127. My health insurance company, 82. My employer slash boss, 79, is sticking it to me. Had a wonderful friendly call from uh, Smokey Joe Bell yesterday. He peed all over my leg. I had to change my underwear 14 times. About the ratings and about bada beep bada boop bada boop. Attaboy, Joe. Now don't do it again. The media, 46. My power company, which only, of course, could be Florida Plunder and Loot, 38. My spouse, 36. I wonder what George voted for. Hmm? I hate this poll, 35. My homeowners and or condo association, 30. About 30, man. The Yenta, the Renta Yentas. My drug dealer, 27. Well, maybe that's what George voted for. No nope. drug companies, 26. My girlfriend or boyfriend, 19. My cable slash satellite dish provider, 19, which, by the way, we better not say that we don't have our satellite working at QAM. That would be embarrassing. That would be like a technical disaster. Right? Uh, my bank, 12. My internet service provider, 12. My credit card company, 11. My uh, kids, 8. My preacher slash rabbi slash cleric slash other uh, uh, schmata head, 4. Getchke. My doctor, 4, or plural. My realtor, three, and my stockbroker, Solamente Uno, out of 898. I bet if you refresh that again, Fatso, you might have 900. What do you think? I refreshed it, and what has it got? It's got the 900. Like, wow, boy. That is amazing. I better leave right now and head for Woodbine. I'll see you later. I maybe find me a good machine, man. Is that incredible or what? Maybe we'll take some really good calls today. What do you think? WQAM, hello. Yes, I want to vote. I like vote. You want to vote on what? I want to vote on the, on the poll. Yeah, well, fine. Go steal a computer somewhere, okay, and vote online. Stop we don't like votes on the phone. I beg your pardon? Stop at the library. and uh, you know, Yeah, stop at the library, okay? Or else just uh, stop at one of those, uh, you know, Best Buy or one place like that and steal a computer and go uh, hook it up. Have somebody hook it up for you. He wants to vote on the poll. Oh, boy. I told you I'm going to take a lot of really good calls someday. Not, not soon. Don't get carried away. All 527 polling places open on time as day voters began the final day of voting on the Strongmere referendum today. 
One voting site in Shenandoah suffered a power outage about 6.30, but opened a schedule at 7 using a generator and computer backup equipment, according to elections uh, supervisor Lester Sola. Electricity was restored by 7.30, he said. If approved, the changes to Dade's charter would give Mayor Carlos Alvarez broad power over day-to-day -day operations of the sprawling county government. He would be able to hire and fire county manager and directors in most of the bureaucracy's 66 departments, including the airport, the seaport, the police, and housing agency, and he'd show up at your home in his bathrobe at 3 o'clock in the morning, pounding on your door. Alvarez says the change would make government accountable to a single countywide elected official who would take decisive actions to fix problems. Opponents, including all 13 county commissioners, say the plan would invest way too much power in a single elected official. An underhanded mayor, they argue, could appoint cronies to top jobs, steer contracts to favor businesses, and steer services to reward or punish particular neighborhoods. If approved, the strong mayor charter would go into effect as soon as the election is certified, probably next Monday. So, in other words, just what you needed is a dictator in Dade County. Isn't that what they need? Okay. Sure, why not? No. Not a good idea. But anyway, hey, listen, I don't want to uh, start, because I'm a Broward guy anyway, and I'm also a, a Toronto guy. i got nothing to do with your local, local politics. One thing about South Florida politics, man, really, really interesting and exciting. Not. No, 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 no. <laughs> 12 minutes past 10 at QAM. Spread them and say cheese. On the next Inside QAM. Josh. Huh? Down here. Oh, hi, Maddie. Want a promotion and a raise? Sure. We have an opening for you at Power. Oh, no thanks. I'm with Neil. Forget Neil. I'm offering you more money in your own office. Uh, I don't know. I might get to be on Neil's will. I've got toys. What? I've got candy. Uh, okay. Good. Quit Neil and start tomorrow. Okay. Well, I feel so good about myself today. Imagine that. My very own office. Well, here it is. Guess we'll start getting set up here. Hey! Huh? What do you think you're doing, pal? Reporting for work in my new office. Your office? This is my office! Get out! Huh? But... I said get out of my office! Huh? Security! No! They said I had a job here! They said I had a job <laughs> Hey, George. What? George. I can't... Uh, Down here. Oh. Hi, Maddie. Want some candy, little boy? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Woo, heavy duty, 1017 at 560 WQAM. QAM, hello. This is my office. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's even funnier the second time. Yeah, it was really good. Turn it up a little bit louder. Open up the window so the whole world can hear it, okay? We get about an 80 share if you would keep doing that. We got 930 votes on the poll. We'll do 1,000 before this hour's out in this horseball kind of a town. That's pretty amazing, you know? Listen to me. Just calm down. 5670560, oh, pound 560 in the Verizon and Singular Wireless line. We've got a malcontent in Hialeah out there who's decided that he's going to, um, he's going to keep sending me messages in MySpace and tell me that uh, the show blows and if we had better production values, uh -huh. whatever the hell yeah, that means, we, we, we have no value. We entertaining. And how come we don't have any guests and Baba Booey, and, well, which makes uh, it a real big yeah. mystery as to what, uh, where he's coming from, okay? Get a life, you pathetic. This is probably one of those guys who does the limbo rock in the tea rooms at Westland. God, give me a break. You know, it's, it's so typical soft photo. You know, you don't like the show. What are you doing on our damn MySpace page? What are you doing on our website? What are you doing in our lives, oh, okay? What are you trying to tell us? I have no lives. Well, we what know for, yeah. We understand that. How come you guys have no guests? Because guests are boring. Okay, it's narrow casting. It's like doing sports talk. It's the same thing. You're immediately eliminating, like, the overwhelming majority of the audience out there who aren't sports nerds. Well, our guest today is Heine Manoush. You know, I think back to those awful, embarrassing days when I did that crap. God, was that bad. I mean, not that there weren't some nice people who came in and tried to peddle their crap, whatever they were peddling, but, boy, it was uh, you know, bad. Mm -hmm. Bad radio. WQAM, hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Hi, right, thanks for taking my call. Well, thanks for uh, making my call. Thank you, sir. I don't have much material, but I just wanted to thank you uh, for the great show and the, the ratings, of course. That was a, a great bit there by Josh. That was great. And lastly, if I can request... Uh, Let's hear it. President Dumpschmidt. <laughs> okay. Have a great day, pal. Mm, he was right. He had no material. Hey, listen, she is whatever you need. We're going to apologize. Okay. She's got it. 939 votes on the poll, and Judge Judy is just smoking this morning. <laughs> WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil. Uh, yes, sir. George, George said earlier about some kind of a poll being held at a library. What is it about? And which library is it? The one right next door to you, schmuck. It's a schmuck poll. That's right. Oh, brother. It's a stripper poll. Go swing around. 
I'm just going to do that the whole four hours today. Although my lips might uh, expand a little bit. That would not be good. Not be a good thing. Although, 939 votes on the poll. Not too shabby. Like I said, we'll have probably the 1,000 by the end of this hour. Oh, there's your president. Anybody going to watch that State of the Onion tonight? No. Absolutely mm. not. Mm. I wouldn't pay that if you uh, watch that if you paid me by the second and pay it either. Is there anything you want to do about it? Yeah, well, yeah. Actually, I would like to do something about it. And that is have a recall. Let's have a recall election. Also known as an impeachment in Congress. Wouldn't that be good? Let's start the Ooh, impeachment yeah. right now. It would be good on the day of his State of the Union address just to put a little extra pressure on Georgie. Maybe he'd fart a lot up there or maybe he'd even drop a load in his pantaloons. Can you see the look on Cheney's face? Uh-oh. WQAM, hello. Hey, it's Produce Man here. How you doing, pal? Okay, what are you going to produce? Uh, I'm going to tell you that uh, they try to sell beefsteak tomatoes out there that haven't grown. Oh, this is that tomatoes. guy. Get out of here, man. Is this guy boring or what? The guy that's starting with a song to dance about how they're gouging people. Nobody cares, okay? We take your beefsteak tomato and sit on Wreck it, them. okay? Take it to Beefsteak Charlie. Yeah, make it, take a couple of them little, uh, what do they call those small uh, little tomatoes? <laughs> cherry, yeah, cherry tomatoes? Yeah, yeah. Cherry tomatoes? Yeah, tomato cherries. And stick them where the moon don't shine. A good substitute for roids, man. Wow. The produce, man. Talk about a, oh, a vacuum, a place, a place. They get on once and they say something that was boring the first time, and then they come back with the same old crap. Don't ever call the show again, okay? Don't do it. Why don't you pay attention? Yeah. <laughs> Idiot. God. Okay, what's this you just faxed? CDC advisor arrested for men's room incident. Uh-oh. A prominent public health expert who's a top advisor to federal health agencies was arrested on suspicion of public indecency for his behavior in an airport men's room. Not a good idea. Dr. Hugh Tilson, 67, was arrested January 16th at Hartsfield-Jackson Atlanta International Airport after a plainclothesman, a plainclothes policeman said he saw Tilson masturbating at a urinal while watching other men urinate. Tilson, as an esteemed leader in the public health world, has advised the government on industry and health outcomes, drug safety, evidence-based health policy, and public health preparedness. Let's hear it. He co-authored <laughs> co an influential 88 Institute of Medicine report on the future of public health in the U.S. and is a professor in the University of North Carolina's public health leadership program. I wonder if he knows Ms. Foley. Tilson has recently co-chaired a task force advising the Atlanta-based Federal Centers for Disease Control and Prevention on setting agency priorities and goals. He was visiting Atlanta last week for a senior leadership retreat with CDC Director Julie Geberding and others. A CDC spokesman Monday said if agency officials had just learned of his arrest, the agency had no comment because it's a law enforcement matter, said the spokesman, Glenn Nowak. Tilson could not be immediately reached for comment at his UNC office or Raleigh, North Carolina home or through his university email. He was charged with public indecency, a city code violation considered of less consequence than a misdemeanor. According to a police report, it is, less, it is common for people convicted in Atlanta city code violations to face fines no more than a grand or some form of community service. He posted a $500 bond and was released, but he'll have to return to Atlanta next month for a court appearance and hopefully will not be peeing next to anybody else. How do you like that? Well, you got a little bit excited, okay? You got a little bit uh, carried away. We're going to apologize. 950 votes on the poll. Who's effing you the hardest these days? And it don't even feel good. My property slash insurance company, which is a good lead into this story. A little bit more on what we had yesterday. Bush is president. Success 39%, failure 55%, according to a brand new CNN opinion poll right now by a bunch of retards. Should be 99% uh, failure and 1%, you know, like his relatives and family. Legislators passed plan promising 10 to 55 percent cuts in property insurance rates, almost unanimously. The Florida legislature yesterday voted to give homeowners a break from soaring property insurance premiums. Is there anything you want to do about it? Promising rate cuts between 10 and 55 percent on their hurricane coverage. Why don't you pay attention? South Florida home and condo owners who have paid among the highest rates statewide are expected to see some of the biggest reductions, but the rate relief will depend on where they live and their insurers. George. Mm -hmm. Republican Governor Charlie Gay, Christ, who pushed legislators during the seven-day emergency session for meaningful rate reduction statewide, sent signals he would sign the legislation into law and commended Republicans and Democrats for reaching the final compromise. It's amazing to see what you can accomplish when you don't care who gets the credit, Christ told legislators. Hey, Charlie. You fairy. They said it couldn't be done, but you did it, he said. You did it. I wonder if David Sampson was in the crowd. Oh, boy. Homeowners, including condo residents, condo commandos, should see price breaks when their policies be new in the next several months. 
Businesses will also see some relief, although not as much. Uh, under the plan approved, rates will fall by allowing private insurers to buy cheaper reinsurance from the state and requiring that they pass along the savings to the consumers, to you poor schleppers out there who are getting raped at The House was first to approve the broad 167-page compromise finalized during marathon weekend negotiations, passing at 5.15 p.m. by a vote of 116 to 2. Solamente dos. The Senate followed 14 minutes later with a 40 to nothing vote. All South Florida legislators voted in favor of the package. Approval came on the final day of the session. I wonder what Pharrell thought about that package. Approval came on the final day of the session called to address the state's property insurance woes. What did I just say? Which are threatening to face Floridians out of their homes because of double and triple digit insurance premium increases. We tried to stop the bleeding, Senate Banking and Insurance Committee Chairman Bill Posey of Rockledge said, but we don't claim the bill is perfect and we don't claim the work is done. Although no hurricane made landfall last year in Florida, the insurance companies have landed skyrocketing rates on the disastrous hurricane season of 2004 and 5, when eight storms, including Katrina, ravaged the state. Katrina, well, it was Wilma was the really bad one, wasn't it, for at least some of us? Mm-hmm. Am I right? Yeah, I forget. It was Wilma. Katrina was uh, no big deal for us. If we hadn't passed the bill, we would have been in terrible shape, said Senate Democratic Leader Steve Geller of Hallandale Beach. The economy of the state was grinding to a halt. So there's a little bit of relief for you, okay? And not good enough probably to stay in Florida. That's a bad idea if you're thinking about that. Oh, there's the pissed-off cable. The, a therapist can do it. Well, that commercial wouldn't make sense to me. Why not? Well, therapists are... Are what? Smart. <laughs> My mother's calling. <laughs> the pissed-off caveman's mother. Well, that's sweet. 26 past 10 at 560 WQAM on a great Tuesday, man. It's a, yesterday was a corner-turner. Like Lana Turner was kind of a corner turner, or Glenn Turner. You still don't know who Glenn Turner was with the hair lip. Uh, Dare to be great. Who? Dare to be great. He was good. Hey, experience the difference at Mercedes-Benz of Pompano, and because at Mercedes-Benz of Pompano it doesn't make any difference what time of month you purchase a vehicle, whether it's one of the brand new 2000 Mercedes-Benz luxury sedans, the 2007 GL Class, the first Mercedes-Benz full-size SUV, or their large selection of certified pre-owned cars. When you choose Mercedes-Benz of Pompano, you've got over 200 employees working their brains off, dedicated to providing you incomparable service. The proud sponsor of the 2007 official players and celebrity gala at the Dakota Design Center of the Americas in Dania Beach on February the 2nd. Go to supermet.com for details, including your chance to register to win a 2007 CLK350 convertible courtesy of Mercedes-Benz of Pompano. The event benefits United Way of Broward and is open to the public. Again, go to supermet.com for details. Call 1-800-NEW-BENZ, N-E-W-B-E-N-Z. You'll find them at I-95 and Copens Road. That's 1-800-NEW-BENZ for Mercedes-Benz of Pompano, a Mercedes-Benz dealer like no other you've ever seen in your life. Neil God. Absolutely. Ooh, a presidential run, it might be fun Are you gonna give it up? Try Obama Ooh, you make the voters run, are you the one? Will we vote for the black guy? Obama, never stop for rock, he's on top It may be his time, but his name sounds like He's an Arab guy, my, 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 my Woo! Barack Obama Man, I told you that first. You heard it right here on the world-famous Neil Rogers Show. And, of course, back in school. Now, that wasn't in that story I just read. But where did you see the thing about in school he was known as Barry? It was on that video. You know, that story that you read had some links. Yeah. And you could click on it to see they take Link's a tour Ray. of the actual school and they interview. What was the song by Link Ray? Who? That instrumental. Link Ray. I don't know. I'll look it up. It was really good. I bet you Chicken Neck knows what it was. But at any rate, uh, so it had some links, and in school he was known as Barry. Right. They interviewed a guy that went to school with him. And then, uh, of course, uh, Fox News is probably going to report that Barry rhymes with... You fair! ...like that, see? So they're going to come up with all the angles. They're already, like, shooting with all, all, all barrels. Out of control. Rupert Murdoch and a bunch of neocon lunatics. Right-wing uh, fascistas. Link Ray and uh, Rumble. Is that it? Was that the song? Rumble? No, 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 no. It was an instrumental. I don't know. How are we spelling Link Ray? With a K and a How else Ray? would you spell Link? How, how many ways is there to spell Link? With the thing. Huh? L-I-N-K. And I was either, I think, W-R-A-Y. Maybe uh, I think that's how you spelled it. I got no, no Link Ray. for that. You got what? I got no Link Ray. Well, let me look it up in my book. No, that's not what I said at all. Link Ray. And, and, and the Rayman. Link Ray and the Rayman. 
What a memory. And, of course, there's nobody in the audience has any idea what I'm talking about. And you know what? That's why, that's one of the reasons the show is so uh, enticing. Link Ray and his Rain Men, Rumble and Rawhide. All right! And Rumble was his bigger hit. It was number 16. This is 1958 and 59. Boy, you must be really old, Neil. 58 and 59. When I was a teenager, hiding deep in the closet. But at any rate, the founder of the Girls Gone Wild videos was sentenced to two years probation and 200 hours of community service for violating federal laws designed to prevent the sexual exploitation of minors. Joe Francis, 33. Don't, I wonder if he's kin to Arlene Francis. Also was ordered yesterday to pay a half a million dollar fine as part of a plea deal he made with the U.S. Department of Justice in September when he pleaded guilty to failing to document the ages of young women in Florida engaging in sexually explicit acts in the tapes. <laughs> under the deal, mm, under the deal, Francis acknowledged he included footage of two drunken underage girls shot in Florida in the videos. And every guy who's listening right now says, well, where do I get those? I'm not giving them my that? copy. You got one? Several. I don't believe you. Francis said he was targeted because the government needs to make an example. The FBI investigated me for five years. This is the best they could come up with, he be saying. Last month, a federal judge in Florida ordered Francis's Santa Monica-based company, Mantra Films, Inc., to pay a $1.6 million fine for featuring in its videos two 17-year-olds who were filmed on Panama City Beach during spring break in 2003. If you ask me, 17 is old enough. But it's close, you know, 18, 17 is close. Francis and the company's three top officers were ordered to perform eight hours of community service monthly for 30 months. About 30, man. Mantra has appealed. So there you go. He's put on probation. The CEO. Oh. Rules gone. Bananas. Oh, sorry. <laughs> not interested, sir. Okay, well, the hell with you. That's not what I heard. Other than the government, who is effing you the hardest right now, that's our poll. we got 979 votes, and we will have over 1,000 by the time the little hand hits the big hand on Big Ben at the top of the hour. 981, as a matter of fact. Boy, this is a really good sign, you know. It goes to show you that punk in Hialeah that's given me, uh, you know, not that I really care, but it's just, it's just so typical to me. The first last week, we had the uh, notorious number one Ojean provocateur in South Florida, the self-appointed, uh, the self-designated driver of decency and uh, humanity, who's, who's just having a nervous breakdown about my uh, sex life, of which, believe me, there ain't much. But every time I talk about anybody, whether they're like uh, 18 or 118, oh, man, look, 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 like, you know, well, get a life, you, you lunatic. I have no so life. we had that last week, and we had the block thing on there, and now we've got another malcontent who also is unhappy on it. And, and I've, all, I've already gotten about half a dozen messages from him. Yeah. Why don't you have... I really want to know. He's a programming maven. He's another expert. He's a 23-year-old punk in Hialeah. Of course, if you were 23 and in Hialeah, you'd probably be pretty P.O.'d about it, too. I would. If I was 23, you know, I wouldn't be in Hialeah. Well, that's my point. The, one of the first places I, I lived, I, well, many moons ago, was in Hialeah Lakes, right next to the uh, uh, high school. Hialeah uh, Hialeah Leaks. Mm -hmm. High Leaks? Uh, whatever it is. Yeah. I, I don't know. And, I, of course, I got confused because all the streets in Hialeah had two numbers on it. You know, 49th Street, 103rd Street. Yeah. I thought, what kind of a bogus place is this? And I got the hell out of there. Other than the government, who is effing you the hardest right now? My property insurance company, 274. But relief's on the way someday. Do you believe it? Well, the oil company's 144. And isn't it amazing how the price of oil has dropped dramatically, and yet the price of gas is still, they're still gouging. I mean, they're still, they're still getting raped at it. Well, it has but dropped. Some. All right, now you're going to start with that Republican propaganda crap. Is that what this is now? No, I'm Chris? just saying my own, out of my own pocketbook. I'm seeing that it's like your own pocketbook. You carry my a pocketbook. Pocket, whatever. My own pocket. Oh my God, he carries a pocketbook. He does exactly. Exactly. My own pocket is 11 down the street for regular. Plays stuff. pocket pool with it. My employer boss, 87. I can't hear the word that George is saying. By the way, it doesn't make sense. I know. My employer slash boss, 87. The media, 48. My power company, Florida Plunder and Loot, 42. What a fabulous job they do of uh, raping and plundering and looting. My spouse, 39, George. I mm -hmm. hate this poll, 37, a mere 3.7%. My drug dealer, 33. My homeowners uh, and or condo association, 33. The drug company's 28. Oh, yeah, gouge. Gouge, gouge, gouge. My cable slash satellite dish provider, 20. My ex-spouse, uh, concubine partner, 20. My credit card company, 19. My girlfriend or boyfriend, 19. My bank, 14. My internet service provider, 12. My kids, 9. My doctor, 5. Hello, doctor. Five got blue lips, doctor. My doctor, 5. My realtor, 4. My preacher slash uh, rabbi, whatever, 4. And my stockbroker, still, solamente uno. Soltanto uno. How come it is that in Italian and Espanol, uno is, uh, you know, number one, uh, 
And uh, then after that, they had to like go in different uh, directions. How, why couldn't they agree? They you know, got separated. Everybody, if everybody would just speak whatever language I like, right, then the world would be a much better place in which to live. That's baloney. <laughs> I do like baloney. <laughs> Oscar Mayer, as a matter of fact. Do you fry it? I know, you know, I don't think I ever did that. Fried baloney. I've yeah. heard of that, but, but I don't think I ever. The only way I like it anymore. Fried baloney. Sure. And what do you what do you put on it? Oh, the same thing. It's just uh, you know, it's hot and fried and crispier. Mm. Hot and fried. You can put cheese on it, you know, bologna and cheese. <laughs> All fried and cheese. hot and melted. Yeah, yeah, maybe I'll play that again someday, but I doubt it. Mm. 21 before 11 at 560 WQAM. Don't forget that big Canes basketball game tonight. <laughs> Everybody in South Florida is going to be gathered around the radio, just like back in the old uh, Hockey Night in Canada days 100 years ago. I wonder if we got, let's see, there's uh, the All-Star game, which is really a disaster. But as it is right now. Well, he's got a pretty good hockey career going, too, Shireen. New Jersey Devils draft pick. All right, let's hear it for those uh, boring New Jersey Devils. Any interest? Uh, I got excited to come to these. Oh, there's Joe Thornton, okay, ugly. Tonight on Fox, American Idol. Yes. Star George Bush sings the Who. We will try to put us Talking about my Jeff Jeff generation. Of, 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 of. Talking about my Jeff generation. Before we grow old. Talking about my Jeff 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 my generation. Of, 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 of. My generation. We don't get fooled again. Get fooled, we can't get fooled again. What do you think of me? It just was terrible, dude. Don't sing ever anymore. Don't. Stop singing. Please. Nice play. Thanks. Very nice. If I were you, I'd phone up the war department, <laughs> volunteer your services, because you've just invented a new form of torture. I have never ordered torture. American Idol. Denied on Fox. He is torture, I'll tell you that. We haven't put the government on there, one of our... Uh, Correspondent Sarah MySpace said, uh, Jeff, he says... Uh, well, I thought that government. was the question other than the uh, government. Oh, it is? Other than the government? Who, yeah, that's exactly right. I forgot about that. He almost... Yeah, other than the government. And I didn't make this poll up. One of our listeners did. So don't be starting a big tennis with me, Jeff, okay? Whoever the hell you are. He says uh, some caustic thing like, well, evidently you're not bothered by the government. Well, obviously, <sighs> the government would be number one. So what's the point of putting it on there, that's Jeff? That's right. Whoever you are. 1,003 votes. 1044. <laughs> Oh, oh. And we got a thousand tricks. I think that means that we can do this the whole rest of the show now. That's what Joe Bell told me. And this loop, what do you think? Let's do it. Forget it. Good for you. Listen to me. How old are you? Goodbye. I will kill you. I will kill you. Say it again. Listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> I like this, the Judge Judy screen loop. Oh. For all you screamers out there. 1,003 votes. Yeah, you're right. Other than the government. And the very first words in the poll say other than the government. And Jeff had only somebody didn't read that part to him. Maybe somebody will read it to you, Jeff, and you'll finally get the, uh, you'll get the hang of it. Or maybe somebody will just come with that same rope they used for Sodom. And there's two henchmen there. I wonder if they use the same rope. Because, you know, things are a little bit tight in Iraq these oh, days. Oh, no pun intended, I'm sure. 5670560. Oh, pound 560 in the Verizon Singular. Wireless line. WQAM, hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. I've been living in Florida for seven years, and I've only went six days without power. Yeah. So I'm a big fan of FPL. I don't understand the big problem with them. Well, you know what? There's always got to be one schmuck out there. You know, no matter what it is, there's always got to be one. There's probably some people that want to catch uh, tuberculosis, too. They want to, probably people would like to have malaria and uh, berry berry. You still never saw that movie, did you? All Fall Down with Eva Marie Saint and Brandon DeWilda and uh, Warren Beatty and Carl Malden. Correct. All Fall Down. It's uh, depressing. You'd like it, though. I mean, oh, compared to I your life, it's pretty uplifting. I don't like yeah, depressing right. movies. My, uh, my depression cup runneth over. Really? It, it's morbid and depressing. Uh, but the no, Brandon thank DeWilden's you. in it. Hey, Brandon. Yeah. Although he's still dead. Jeez. That is really a shame. When somebody ugly dies, you know, well, you know who cares, but... When somebody who looked really good dies, oh, what a shame! What a you know, that's that's a very sad thing. But that that see, it's not just me. See, I would think that was only me, and that just because I'm a dirty old man. But it's everybody. Most people feel much more. Uh, you know, if it's a stranger, you know, I mean, if obviously it's somebody in the family, different story. Mm -hmm. But if it's a stranger and they see the picture on TV, oh, what a beautiful girl! I mean, she would have been so you know. And if she was ugly and had like a nose where her ear is supposed to yeah. be, ah, uh, you know, who cares? She had it coming anyway. WQAM, hello. Well, this is on definitely slow cook today. QAM. Hey, Uncle 
Brooklyn Beam. How are you doing? Pretty good, sir. Uh, a few minutes ago, you were play, uh, playing that uh, bit uh, caveman commercial. Yeah. Uh, a few weeks ago, you were asking about a lady from the Godfather movies by the name of uh, Talia Shire. For the name of Talia Shire? I no, thought I her name you was... were asking about Talia Shire, that you haven't seen her around in a while. Yeah. She's the therapist in the commercial there. Oh, she is? That is her. Boy, how the mighty have fallen. Absolutely. Isn't that something? From the Godfather to a, uh, a guy called I, I thought it commercial. looked like her, but I thought, no, I can't be Talia that Shire. That is her. Who wouldn't be making these commercials? Wow. That's her. With, that's how she used to look in the Rocky movies with the glasses. Well, yeah. That is Don't her. Don't ever give an order like that again. <laughs> Good day, sir. Thanks a lot, pal. Bye. Don't ever give an order like that again. Yeah, let's get really Godfather intensive, you know. And the good news for me is I haven't watched any of it in quite some time now, so maybe I'll just... Leave the gun. Take the cannoli. We did that poll a long time ago. I still think it's a really good poll. Who's your favorite character from the Godfather movies other than, mm-hmm. other than Don Corleone? Of course. Right, I mean, don't want, I mean, he would be too obvious. It's like saying, other than government, who is effing you the hardest right now? I had doing a poll like I that. I mean, no questions. Uh, we were just discussing it. It's, it's sunny. He's a riot. He's a panic. Santino. Yeah. Yeah. He's a pit. Oh, bing, you blow their brains all over your nice cyber league. <laughs> he is so good. He's really great. Especially when he's uh, beating Carlo there with the but, shoe you know, the interesting, the, the interesting thing about him, though, and this is very sad for somebody like me who's now become, like I told you, one day you wake up and you're an old fart. Mm-hmm. But he is so different now, like even in uh, Misery, you know, with Kathy Bates, mm-hmm. which is a great movie. Mm-hmm. But he's like like a beaten down old man, you know, like well. you, when you look at... Well, he is. I know he's 100 years old. Oh. Jesus. A movie. Mm-hmm. But he's like like a beaten down old man, you know, like well. you, when you look at... Well, he is. I know he's 100 years oh. old. Jesus. And, and back in Godfather, he was like uh, full of it, you know. Yeah. Like, oh, bing, you blow their brains all over your nice side release. Yeah. Full of them and vigor. Exactly, or whatever goes with Vim, which yeah. I'm sure we can't see on the air. What but is Vim? Rate, now, where's the thing where he says, uh, oh, no, that's not it. Oh, here it is. You're taking us very personal. Every line he said in there was just uh, spectacular. Of course, every line from the movie is like, they talk when they should listen. Right. What's the matter with you? Yeah, that was Geldy and Moe, as I recall. Well, I'm a superstitious man. Yeah. And if some unlucky accident should befall him if he should get shot in the head by a police officer. Or if he should hang himself in his jail cell. Or if he's struck by a bolt of lightning. Then I'm going to blame some of the people in this room. And then I do not forgive. And then I do not forgive. Wow, what a memory, huh? See, the old man has yeah, lost well, it. Maybe... What? I said, that's an easy one. Well, it is an easy one. You're right about that. WQM Godfather line. Hello. Good morning, Neil. Yes, sir. Uh, I'd like to uh, cast a little ballot in that first. Uh, Sally Tessio, but only if you can get me off the hook for old time's sake. Can't do it, Pally. <laughs> I was just going to ask. I think it'd be the greatest thing if, when the Humper does all this Super Bowl stuff, if you could superimpose some of your little bits over it, and I think that would make the Super Bowl a great thing. Have a great day. Okay, thank you. I have no idea what he's talking about. The Humper's going to be doing his Super Bowl thing? Um, next week. See, we have some stuff going media. on here on the station, and I don't know what it's all about. I would ask George, like, we got some contests going <laughs> on, which, uh, but then again, yeah, see, he's laughing, because he doesn't listen to the rest of the station or the sports segments, and I don't either, because I'm certainly not going to come in here and spend my very valuable time, the time I could be spending IMing people out there. <laughs> oh, man. I, I thought that this Internet thing, this chat thing was, you know, it was pretty far out, but I'm going to tell you, the instant messaging thing, Mm-hmm. Oh, brother, that, that, that's worse than crack cocaine. That's like uh, like sugar. Sugar. It's addicting. And you sit there and all of a sudden you realize the hours are going by and pop, 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 and back and forth. And it becomes like a contest. Like who's going to throw in the towel first? Brandon. Brandon. And I'm sorry, I just, uh, last night I got, I finally, I think that's my first defeat online, you know, in, in terms of that I am contact. Yeah. Because when you're full of it like I am. But it just reaches the point after about four or five hours. <laughs> oh, it is wicked, baby. It really is. Of course, you're not in any of that. You don't have time for that crap. Yeah. WQAM, hello. You go in Canada. Oh, we go in. I'm very poor. Usually you've got that uh, sock over it, you know? Welcome. Very weak today. Very weak effort. Try it again uh, tomorrow. WQAM, hello. Hi, Neil. How's it going? Okay, sir. My toilet overflowed this morning. What do I do? Stick your head in it, okay? Stick your head in it, and then uh, then hit the uh, thing again. Yeah, hit the flusher again, schmuck. Now, there's that guy in Hialeah. I'm sure that was him. I told you he hangs out in the tea room. He does the limbo rock under the uh, stalls. WQAM, hello. I'm the meat packer guy. They're trying to sell... 
<laughs> oh, not to be confused with the produce guy, the meat packer guy, right. Yeah, you're the packer, all right. I'm, that's what I heard. WQAM. Hi, Brown. Uh-huh. WQAM, hello. QAM. Put me in the well, Junior. No chance, schmuck. WQAM, hello. QAM. Not there. What a shame. That was going to be a really good call, too. Can you smell it? Oh, it had the flavor, the aroma of a really great call. QAM, hello. Yeah, it's my ball, me. My ball, bitch. Okay, good. Well, stick them in your... Wreck them. See what happens. This is the intelligentsia, by the way. If there's anybody from out of town visiting, because it is the uh, middle of the winter time up north, anybody in South Florida right now visiting, this is the intelligentsia, the cream of the crop of South Florida, which would be a really good lesson to you, a good message. Mm -hmm. Do not even think about uh, extending your life into that uh, cesspool, the outdoor cesspool known as South Florida. Don't even think about it. Because this is what we get. This, this show, I, I've told you this for 100 years now. It's a mirror of South Florida. You know what I'm saying? It's like a mirror mm -hmm. image. And that is absolutely correct. How are we doing on that poll? There's no, there's no stopping us now on here. We've got 1,032 vote already. Other than the government, who is effing you the hardest right now? That is, you know, not literally, of course. We don't want to get too personal. But at any rate, my property insurance company, 287. The oil company is 150. My health insurance company, 93. My employer slash boss, 89. The media, 53. My power company, FPL. But I would talk about a setup call that schmuck before. He's got stock, you know, 45. I love FPL. I've only had six days yeah. without power. Too bad today wasn't one of them. My spouse, 40. I hate this pool. Only 37, 3.5%. My homeowners and or condo association, 36. My drug dealer, 34. The uh, drug companies, about 30, man. My credit card company, 24. My cable slash satellite dish provider, 22. My ex-spouse concubine partner, 22. My girlfriend or boyfriend, 19. Maybe both. My bank, 19, uh, 15. My internet service provider, a dozen. My kids, 9. My realtor, 5. My doctors, 5. My preacher, rabbi, etc., 4. And my stockbroker, only 1 out of 1032. I was thinking, it just dawned on me, the Hallmark was the name of that uh, condo commando place in Hallandale. The Hallmark. Okay. I was thinking about a show I did on, speaking of having guests on, on W News 100 years ago, and it was live from the Hallmark, the Neil Rogers show. And I'll never forget it as long as I live. It was so typical, all the old yentas. And I had uh, Dr. Um, Bill Wilbanks from FIU on there, professor of criminology, and Marvin Dunn, and then some, a couple of other local activists. It was like a heavy, heavy topical show, you know, back in the days when we used to talk to people older than death. Mm -hmm. And there's this big crowd of old blue hairs out there sitting in the audience, and they're like uh, practically gasping. We're talking about race relations in South Florida and the relationship to race and crime and well, whatever it was all about. Usual bunch of crap. And uh, during a break, about an hour into the show, the salesperson comes to me and she says, you better change the topic. The audience doesn't like the topic. <laughs> it's the ratings. Yeah. The audience doesn't like the topic. The old blue hairs, it's too serious, it's too heavy. The audience doesn't like the topic. I said, the chance of my, I've got all these people here, these guests, I'm in the middle of a show, and you're telling me to change the topic. I said, get lost, get out of my face, you idiot, you... You fair. Right. Well, guess what? It came noon, or whatever the hell the time was, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, here comes the free food way in the back of the room. They have a table set up, and here's the bagels and the lox and the cream cheese, and all of a sudden, I'm back doing the show, and I have to, I can barely hear myself think, because all the buzz is oh, yeah. going on. One, one right, thing yeah, about yeah. when the food comes out, they're all, bzz, 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 you know, they're all making a big simmus. And that, that got them out of their seats and away from my face, and I all talked bad. about whatever the hell I wanted, the free food. The bagels are here. Oy vey. What a place, baby. What a place. When, you see, Anne Bancroft said in that movie, when we're ready to die, we go to Florida. After you die, that's the time to go to Florida. Have your, have your remains shipped there. Stick them in the Everglades. 1056 at 560 QM for a... This is the Neil Rogers Show. <laughs> this is your brain. <laughs> Any questions? It's time to put James Brown's body in the ground. It's been over two weeks since he's made a sound. While his family's acting fickle, he's melting like a popsicle. It's time to put James Brown's body in the ground. It's time to put James Brown's body in the ground. Absolutely. Right now he's just like a car at the impound. He's already met St. Peter, but his corpse is by an eater. It's time to put James Brown's body in the ground. It's 
Sometimes you put James Brown's body in the ground. Let's hear it. He's like a single mitten it's lost and found. I and will say you. While the pearly gates are closing, his body is decomposing. It's time to put James Brown's body in the ground. All right. It's time to put James Brown's body in the ground. Yes. The godfather of soul should be heaven found. Oh. Even though he still looks perky, he's turning into beef jerky. It's time to put James Brown's body in the ground. Oh. 1101 at 560 WQAM. I still don't... Uh... Well, it's the James Brown Graceland. You explained that to me, but ah. it sounds a little bit yeah, eerie to me. Yeah. Plus, I don't give a crap about James Brown. No, that's a bad thing to say. It's not a racial thing. There's plenty of like uh, black recording artists I care a lot about and did care a lot about, although not so much uh, the crop of today, <laughs> if you catch my drift. Not so much this group of uh, no. pretenders. 1,137 members on MySpace.com. Now, isn't it great that even though I might mention a couple of people from there, like uh, Jeff, who uh, wrote me the thing about, how about the government, Neil? You don't seem to be bothering you. Hey, right. And then the poll question is, other than the government. And then, of course, that Julio and Hialeah, which I, I guess he finally decided that he ain't going to hear Baba Booey on here. See, if he doesn't like the show, my question would obviously be, why would he be uh, sending me messages in the middle of it and uh, listening to it? And that's because he's in South Florida. You got it. I, and you got it. That is correct. Yes, Americans flying to Mexico, Canada, and the Caribbean make sure, made sure to bring their passports yesterday because of a new rule that goes into effect today. Today is the 23rd. That is correct. Requiring them to show one to get back into the country. You have to have a passport. You've got to show it or they won't let you back in. Show it. And the passport, too. Only about a quarter of U.S. citizens hold valid passports, and most Americans are accustomed to traveling to neighboring countries with just a driver's license or a birth certificate, which have long been sufficient to get through airport customs on the trip home. The new regulations requiring passports were adopted by Congress in 2004 to secure the borders against terrorists. Travelers at Hartsfield, Atlanta International Airport, other airports said they had no complaints about the requirement. I'd rather be going through a security check than possibly being blown out of the air because of lack of security measures. John Golden of Columbus, Georgia, was headed to Cancun, Mexico. Mm -hmm. Oh, not Cancun, Mexico. What a bad choice. They always get those people's comments. Never anybody that's got, you know, a brain. A gripe or a brain. Listen to me. What? Starting Tuesday, today, Canadian, Mexican, and Bermudan air travelers, as well as U.S. citizens flying home from those countries or the Caribbean, must display their passports to enter the USA. Eh? Like last night on Wheel of Fortune, the, uh, one of the uh, prizes, the trip they gave away was to Jamaica. I thought the guy was going to cry. Who wants to go to Jamaica, Mom? <laughs> well, seriously, why does anybody want to go to Jamaica? Do you like it? Oh. Oh, wait a minute. We got a new... Uh, see, I don't, I don't have enough decks to handle all the new stuff we got here today. No, I understand. Oh, brother. Two loose lot decks. Now, which version do we like better? That one? Or? Do you like it? Mm. <laughs> do you like it? The original. Do you? Yeah. Even I with a little note in do the Do you back. like it? Do you like it? I like it. Do you like it? it? Yeah, okay. 1,058 votes on the poll, by the way. So, anyway, this guy's on the way to Cancun, Mexico, so I hope that uh, he uh, gets the squirts and all the other stuff that goes along with it. The only valid substitutes for a passport will be a Nexus Air card used by some American Canadian frequent flyers. What is a Nexus Air card? I have no idea what that is. Well, I, sh I sure ought to have one, whatever it is. Identification as U.S. Coast Guard, Merchant Mariner, and the green card carried by legal permanent residents. Active members of the U.S. military are exempt. The green card carried by legal permanent residents. I don't, uh, again, I'm clueless. For now, the rules affect only air travelers. Land and sea travelers will not have to show passports until at least January of next year. Air travelers who cannot produce a passport will be interviewed by customs agents who will decide whether they left them in the country or not. And, of course, probably their voter registration card. If they're registered as Democrats, they will not be allowed back in. We're not seeing a panic from travelers because we've been pretty diligent in telling them for over a year that they need una pasaporta. It's written on any piece of paper we have going out, said AAA spokeswoman Teresa Hildebrand. Internet travel sites such as Expedia.com have posted warnings in bold with exclamation point, as in, oh! said company spokeswoman Erin Krauss, adding that agents followed up with emails to customers traveling to the affected destination. Get that passport. Uh, and it's very sad to me, the very small number of Americans who have passports, because then they don't wind up going anywhere. And now you ain't going to go nowhere, because you've got to have one. No more with the driver's license, the birth certificate, all those other bogus things. What's the, you know how easy it is to get a passport? No. How easy is it? Pretty damn easy. What about Chris? You got a passport? Yep. Even a putz like Chris has got a passport. What does that tell you? Uh, that, that he has a passport. No, no. It tells you he's not as um, lame as you claimed that he was. I had to get it when I went to Amsterdam. You went to Amsterdam? Uh, about five years ago, yeah. And? Well, five it. years ago was still pretty good. 
Yeah, I love the place. I wouldn't be surprised if that's when I had my apartment. Maybe you were standing there when I took that tumble and fall and broke my uh, bone in my hand in the uh, red light district. They're right by the old church. What were you doing in the red light district? Everything well, you could, I, I imagine. Listen, what are you? Are you kidding me? <laughs> are you kidding me? There only I've always said this for years. I used to say this when my mother was alive because it aggravated the hell out of her. There are only two reasons people go to Amsterdam, sex and drugs, and I don't do drugs, okay? So you figure it out. <laughs> What was I doing in that part of town? Give good, me a break. Good food there? Yeah, oh, yeah, good food in Amsterdam. Well, where are you going to find that? I guess at Mickey D's. Huh? I wonder if that rat is still hanging on under the deep fryer at Mickey D's on the dam rack. They got so many fast food joints there. And, of course, and of course fritas, man. Fritas, palmas, the French fries. Oh, they're obsessed with that crap. That was the grossest thing to see. And, of course, they, they put that, just like mayonnaise. John Revolta said, they put that mayonnaise on the uh, fries. And then, of course, in some places, they put that oozing brown sauce on it, which looks, well, I don't want to say what it looks like. Did Not you go to Belgium when you were over there? Did I what? Go to Belgium. No, I did not. I hear, though, uh, Brussels is pretty interesting. Yeah, we took a train over to Belgium. I don't remember exactly where in Belgium, but we took a train over there, and uh, it was a pretty nice went there for a day. What did you do in Belgium? Sightsee. Uh, I was there with the family, so. I see. Oh, gee, going to Amsterdam with a family, that's like going there with a wife or girlfriend. Yeah, I kind of took a little bit of the fun out of the possibilities. Yeah, oh, so many possibilities. In the meantime, they're all standing over your shoulder. Oh, well, don't be looking at that, Sonny, and don't be uh, doing this one, and don't uh, look at her, and don't go in that door. Yeah, but when you get a uh, first-class round-trip ticket for 300 bucks, you can't really turn it down. First-class round-trip ticket for 300 bucks? How'd you do that? As I said, my dad's in the cruise line business. He's in connected. the cruise line He's business? What's that got to do with the uh, airfare? Uh, the company, they had like an agreement with travel agents and stuff like that, and so anyone that was in the company could go with, you know, them and one person, um, they're like, you know, the wife or husband or whatever, for about 300 bucks, and wow. then I was able to get on with another employee as like, you know, the second person, so. Well, isn't that sweet? Well, there you go. Chris just moved up in our uh, list. He's uh, got a passport. He's been to Amsterdam. He's been on the dam rack. He's been at that damn square. You know, it's a funny thing. One, uh, one time I was on the phone with uh, whoever I used to make my reservations from, which I don't do that no more. But I was making a reservation for the Krasnopolsky Hotel, which I'm sure you saw where that was, right? The yep. Grand Krasnopolsky? Yep. And it's right there by Dam Square. Well, I'm on the phone with this uh, lady who's very nice, and she's taken my reservation. And, um, you know, she's trying to find the hotel I'm trying to reserve in her uh, list, you know. She says, oh, this might be it. It says, oh, it's on that, I don't want to say it, on that Dam Square. <laughs> oh. You're kidding no, she was uh, embarrassed to say, to say it. She thought she was swearing. She didn't want to say oh, damn. damn. For and I thought, sakes. you damn idiot. But at any rate. Doug Thompson's got a column here. How many more have to die? And, of course, I thought once we got to 3,000, there would be this huge hue and cry. But <laughs> yeah. It doesn't make any difference what the number is. It could be 50,000. Doug Thompson says on CapitalHillBlue.com, President George W. Bush's illegal, immoral, and inexcusable war in Iraq cost another 27 American soldiers their lives over this weekend. That's right, 27. Saturday's escalating violence in the out-of-control civil war killed 25 Americans, the third bloodiest day of the war, and two more died on Sunday. This brings the death toll of Americans in Iraq to more than 3,050 and comes as the first brigades of Bush's ill-conceived troop surge arrived in the country to provide more cannon fodder for his ridiculous war. This doesn't include the more than 50,000 Americans wounded and or maimed or the hundreds of thousands of Iraqi civilians killed or wounded as a result of Bush's war. How many more have to die because of Bush's madness? Must the Pentagon projections of 6,000 dead by the end of this year and 10,000 dead by the end of next year come tragically true before something's done to stop this out-of-control president? Today started off bloody as two bombings killed at least 78 Iraqis and wounded 150 more. That was yesterday. Such bloody carnage is business as usual in Baghdad, and it won't stop because the president, who himself never served a day in combat, thinks he knows more than commanders on the ground and sends even more Americans into harm's way. Tonight, Bush will get up before a joint session of Congress and deliver the annual collection of lies and political spin called the State of the Union Address. I'm not sure when, if ever, any president's State of the Union speech accurately reflected what was really happening in America, but Bush's ramblings tonight will no doubt carry denial to new heights. He will claim his Iraq plan will work when just about everybody else knows it won't. He'll try to steer public debate away from his many failures in Iraq toward a domestic agenda that so far catalogs another set of colossal blunders. He'll brag about cutting taxes and claim such cuts have helped the economy, ignoring the reality that his tax cuts, combined with massive spending for his failed war, have plunged the country into a massive debt that will haunt future generations. The damage this man and his collection of thugs, thieves, con artists, and liars have done to this country is inconceivable, irresponsible, irresponsible and possibly irreparable. Even members of his own party now abandon his failed principles and policies. Republican Senator Chuck Hagel calls Bush's latest troop surge the biggest foreign policy blunder since Vietnam. 
Voters last November sent a clear message that they want Americans out of Americans out of Iraq, but Bush proudly says he doesn't listen to voters or anyone else who disagrees with his flawed vision of reality. Congress isn't much help either. They talk of non-binding resolutions to bring the troops home, but lack the courage to take a real stance against a despotic president who has, for all practical purposes, seized control of the government of the USA. And while all this pondering and politicking and pussyfooting continues, more and more Americans die in a war that didn't need to be waged for reasons that did not exist by a president with no regard for law, morality, or decency. How many more have to die? The fact that even one American died from Bush's lunacy is too many. Every day that this carnage is allowed to continue is a crime against humanity by a war criminal named George W. Bush, aided and abetted by a criminal enterprise called the Congress of the U.S. A. Eh? Hi, this is Tom, your default friend on MySpace. I'm the regular kind of guy who sends you tips and updates. You know, like your stolen pics load faster at 600K. Good golly gosh, MySpace sure has grown, hasn't it? And all along it was just me, Tom, running the whole thing. Yeah, just me, regular guy Tom. And I'm being as honest as anyone else is on MySpace. Just because I sold it for $580 million doesn't mean I can't be the friendly mask of another powerful corporation that writes new laws that run your meaningless lives. Look at you. You're like ants. Right, Rupert? Right, Tom. You make the Prince of Darkness proud, Knight. Continue using your image to lure children too young for leg hair and law enforcement personnel who pose as the same. And together, we will deliver the souls of all unto Satan. Thus, he will grant you the gift of immortality. <laughs> Good day, mate. Gee, thanks, Rupert. This is Tom saying, see you online tomorrow with another happy update. I know it was you, Fredo. You broke my heart. You what? You broke my heart. Oh. <laughs> Poor, he's dead too, right, John Cazale? Yes. Fredo. Is long dead. time ago, yeah. Oh, for a long time. Isn't that sad? He was also the engine in Dog Day Afternoon. Correct. Attica. Attica. And then he was also... I'm dying over here. At any rate. Wait till you hear this. The, uh, to show you how many people there are out there with too much time on their hands and what kind of a uh, world it is. 3,050 dead American soldiers in Iraq. We got this bimbo, this lunatic, who's going to make his State of the Onion address tonight. Who should have been impeached. The first, the first time he sent one soldier over there, they should have impeached his ass. And this is what America's worried about. Average Super Bowl ticket price leaps to 5540 bucks. George will take two. Two what? The average Super Bowl ticket increased 6% yesterday to 5500 The average price, 5540 bucks on increased demand from fans of the Bears and the Colts, according to an analysis by SeatSmart. SeatSmart. Correct them. Yeah, they check out to see if you've got any stains on your undies. Indies in the undies. The cheapest tickets for sale are on the five large ticket broker sites. Seat Smart tracks went for an average of forty-two fifty-four on Sunday before the Bears and Colts won their games uh, to win in the uh, February fourth Super Bowl at Dolphin Stadium. Yesterday, it jumped nine percent to forty-six fifteen. With the Bears playing in their first Super Bowl in twenty years and the Colts making their first Super Bowl appearance since they left Baltimore in eighty-four, ticket brokers and travel companies saw the teams as boosting ticket demand for Super Bowl. Colt fans and Bear fans have been waiting a long time for this," said Seat Smart Chief Executive Larry Kaskaska. Seat Smart. How do you like that? Okay. WQAM, hello. Hi. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Tell Chris why you fell in the in, in cobblestone in uh, Amsterdam. Yeah. Meaning? This is, uh, you know, him. Oh, I know. Reverend Lunacek. I know. They're all back and forth. Yeah, you know, what I did was tripped and fell in the cobblestone streets. That's exactly correct. But, of course, these people have got some story. I have no idea what they're talking about. Neither do they. But they, they have. See, this is what I love about the audience. So many of them. They have all these, just like the one last week with the, uh, that got involved with our page, you know. They have all these uh, delusions, and they're sitting around because they have no lives, and so they conjure up all these images. I'm doing oh, yeah. this, and I'm doing that, and they're, yeah. Right. Tripped and fall, one of those stumbling falls where you're tumbling. I've told the story a million times. Sure. And, stop, and, uh, and here comes this hooker out of the uh, red light district, out of one of the doors. Yeah, did you oh, hook gee, her? mister, your nose is bleeding. Can I help you? And she took me in and washed off my face, and yeah, she was very nice. Very nice. That's sweet. Wasn't that so? I told you that. Is it in time? Mm -hmm. It's a true story. She was uh, very nice. Right. Five six seven zero five sixty pound five sixty in the did garage. You tip her? No, I did not tip her. Good God. WQAM. Hello. Hi. QAM. Hello. 
QAM. Neil. Yes. Hey, Uncle Neil, how are you? Let me turn around. Okay. Hey, you, you uh, mentioned that you looked in the mirror the other day and realized you're an old fart. No, that's not what I said at all. I just said about how fat I was. I, I know I'm an old fart. Well, i got to tell you that uh, the only one I know that uh, instant message, that can instant message for four hours is my teenage daughter. And you, yeah. I think you're still young at heart. And that you're I, 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 think, I think Brandon kept me on there a total of maybe five hours last night. I have never <laughs> been so exhausted. In my, I'm serious. It was like a, a two-part, uh, like a marathon. I come back in here, and he's still on there. And then pop, 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 back and forth. And he won the endurance contest. I must confess, I've uh, been bested. Well, you sure act like a, you know, acting like a teenager when it comes to, um, you know, uh, MySpace and uh, instant messaging. So I wouldn't worry too much. I'm about going you. through my second childhood, man. I didn't enjoy the first one that much, so I'm going to enjoy this one. You did leave off one category last week in your uh, poll about what you're going to do when you retire. Yeah. And that's have a lot of hot gay sex. Ooh, see ya. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he is back again, the hot gay sex guy. Another one with a wild imagination. Hot ah, gay sex. Ah, what kind of like, gay sex do you have? Lukewarm. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I didn't know that there was any other kind. It all depends on what your definition of hot is, okay? Of course, there are some people who are hot, and there are some who are not so hot. Like my old uh, acquaintance Belchin Fart years ago in Miami on Biscayne Boulevard. Belchin Never Fart. Yeah, Belchin Fart. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the Verizon Singular wireless line. WQAM, Hello. Yeah, I wanted to ask, uh, George, what are some uh, good animes to start with? Betty Boop. Huh? Betty Boop. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> you got to start there. Okay. <laughs> give him Steve's phone number. He'll give him, uh, he'll give him some suggestions. WQAM, hello. QAM. This this thing is uh, doing the same thing as well. And yeah, now everything just disappeared. Look at that. Oh, it went, it went out uh, dead for a second. I don't want to say that there are technical issues at QAM, but then again, the audience is tired of hearing about it. So am I. QAM, hello. Neil. Yes, sir. I'm at Project Ross House. <laughs> okay, great. Well, I'm real happy for you, okay? Birds of a feather flushed together. QAM, hello. Rupert Holmes is my hero. Shylock Holmes is my hero, sir. QAM, hello. Yes. WQAM, hello. QAM. Yes. Hello, Neil. Hello, sir. You didn't say that you're going to move to Rigel Seven. Going to what? You're going to move to Rigel Seven, like in that book of Brian did. Mm -hmm. Let's hear it. Yeah, I can't wait. WQAM. Hello. Why is the sky blue? WQAM. Hello. Hey, QAM. how you doing? Hey, I've been I've uh, been on and off. Is Josh, not part of the show anymore. That is correct. Oh, okay, so first tiny now, Josh. Thanks. Sure. <laughs> You're right. You're first killing tiny all of them. now, Josh. I'm killing them all off. Like I had something to do with this. Probably said that's to be okay. put to sleep too. Yeah, I think the call. I think the callers, most of them, do need to be put to sleep. And believe me, I, I have no problems with. It. I got plenty of experience now. My mother used to talk about you know having the dogs put to sleep, and I used to say, well, you know, at your age, maybe there's something to think about there. But then, of course, <laughs> she did us all a big favor. She went to that. Kvetch uh place in the sky. 1,105 votes on the poll. Other than the government, who is effing you the hardest right now? My property insurance company, 299. But boy, we got that blessed relief, about 30 cent now. Everybody's going to save a few bucks and just kiss the ground. Kiss Governor Chris right where he likes it the most. The oil company is 165. My health insurance company, 106. My employer slash boss, 92. The media, 55. There's so many choices on this poll. It takes a half hour to read it. This is a good, good idea. My power company, Florida Plunder Loot, 50. My spouse, 45. I hate this poll. Only 39, 3.5%. My homeowners uh, my, and, uh, or condo association, 38. My drug dealer, 35. My drug company is 31. Credit card company, 27. My cable or satellite dish provider, 24. My ex-spouse slash partner, whatever, 22. My girlfriend or boyfriend, 20. My bank, 18. My internet service provider, 18. 16, whatever it says. My kids, 10. My realtor, 5. My doctor, 5. My preacher, rabbi, uh, Shmata had four, and my stockbroker, only one. Out of 1,106, we broke through another barrier there today. Aren't you excited? No. No. Well, you ought to be. We're going to apologize. I'm sorry. 26 past 11 at 560 WQM. And one thing I want to tell you right now, beware of any stranger. That's what I want to tell you. No, seriously, the message I have for you is go travel, you know. Get out of that place. 
Yeah. Get you a passport and go see the world. Now, even Chris, even when a, a greenhorn like Chris has been in Amsterdam, who did not take a tumbling fall on the cobblestone uh, streets in the, the red light district, I hope. Um, no, but I saw a guy fall over his bike. Did you really? Yeah, he was, like, driving. You know how there's bikes everywhere? He's just kind of driving. See, the thing in Amsterdam is, is. Uh, if you're a pedestrian, which is most of us, uh, look out because you've got the trams, you've got the crazy people on the bicycles. You've got, uh, of course, some cars on those very narrow streets, and uh, it's, a, it's a dangerous place. Very dangerous. Well, I sure wish that my apartment would have worked out. You know, I probably I wouldn't be there right now, but that would have been nice if I would have had a habitable apartment. Tough to find living uh, quarters in Amsterdam, yeah. I will say that. Habitable. Especially if you're... What? Habitable. Yeah, habitable. What did I say? No, it's just a, I like that word. Habitable. And that's an important word. Livable. Right. Not musty, not moldy. Right. Right, without those big uh, spiders the size of bowling balls and without all the schmutz and the um, mildew in the basement. You know, when you got bedrooms in the basement, not a good idea, especially when it's like, uh, oh, schmutzy. But that was your buddy Al Goldstein got me in touch with uh, Peter, the uh, tweeter there, my landlord. Peter. Peter the tweeter. I ought to go back there and throw a brick through his window. 26 past 11 at 5. Peter. WQM. Peter, yeah, here we go. How's Randy doing, huh? Well, Ooh, how's that lawsuit coming, honey? And how's that bankruptcy at the Scare America? What you going to do? Nice college boy, huh? Eh? Didn't want to get mixed up in the family business? Huh? Now you want to gun down a police captain? Why, because he slapped you in the face a little bit? Huh? What do you think, this is the army where you shoot him a mile away? You got to get him close like this, and bing you blow their brains all over your nice cyber league suit. Come in. Mwah! You're taking us very personal. Coming up tonight, an insider behind the true Hollywood celebrity music biography profile story. As we step into another year... It's important to reflect on the ways that music has lifted our hearts, changed the way we look at the world, and given us a reason to go on living. Like that song by The Godfathers. I can't wait to make a fresh start this year. We asked our Inside the Behind interns what a new beginning means to them. Here's Dave. Well, you just think about how much more there really is to life, and yet... Oh. Um, give me one second. Thanks, Dave. Julie's about to finish up her graduate studies in social work and really make a difference out there. Julie? I just want to help people, and... Oh, dear God. You got any fast-acting poison? Here you go. Thank you. <coughs> And finally, young Timothy, who dreams of a career as a... Oh, I guess Timothy can't come to the mic right now. Well, we hope all of you listening appreciate the uplifting, life-affirming message that only truly great music can convey. Apparently, you do. Happy New Year from all of us at Inside the Behind. Oh, boy, that was pretty exciting. Well, I said the Godfather's on it, so I figured, man, it would fit right in, but it was terminal. Yeah, never heard it of was, it. Was, uh, Is there anything you want to do about it? Yeah, I'm going to, like, uh, Schmidt can it. 27 to noon at 560 WQA, and much has been made of America's so-called religious divide, but few of the discussions and debates resemble Alexandra Pelosi's new film, Friends of God. I wonder if that's Friends of... Hey, oh, God! The HBO documentary shows the Reverend Ted Haggard, the former president of the National Association of Evangelicals, Talking frankly about how evangelical Christians have sex more than any other religious group. Yeah, especially if it's oh, hot and we gay in this case. Yeah. Haggard resigned from the church in 2006 after a scandal linked him to drugs and a male prostituta. Oh, my Una God. Prostituta. Well, I guess it wouldn't be Una, huh? Well, in that case, I guess it could be. Haggard served as Pelosi's tour guide through the evangelical community. In the film, he proclaims that evangelicals have the best sex lives in the world. You know, all the surveys say that evangelicals have the best sex life of any other group, he says. In the documentary, Haggard asked an evangelical next to him how often he has sex with his wife. The man replies, every day. Haggard then explains that evangelicals have a lot of love and says to Pelosi, you don't think these babies come out of nowhere, do you? <laughs> of course, I guess what he was doing there, I don't, I don't know if you make any babies that way, but uh, right, um, maybe it was going to be an immaculate conception. He was going to keep doing the, it. For Pelosi, the scandal surrounding Haggard is hard to comprehend. Because Pastor Ted was my tour guide. He was so good to me, she said. He took me under his wing. Well, you know, fairies do uh, have wings. That's yes, why they, do. Fairy. they can fly. Most people think of evangelicals as being these holy roller Jesus freaks, and Ted wasn't like that, she said. It was interesting for me to say these are good people. He was a reasonable, normal, everyday gay man. So it was hard to stomach what had happened. It's hard to stomach it. 
How do you like that? Yeah, I'll bet. Remember I was talking about all the hair that when you get old you grow in your ears, also in your nose. Nose yeah. hairs start getting like longer. Oh, mm -hmm. protruding. Rip it right out of there. And you think, it, you think it's like a, a, you pull it out and you think it's a hair, but it's not. <laughs> and what's this thing you just, uh, it says Oy vey on here from Deb. Oh, yeah, I saw this. And, and thank you because I forgot to uh, print this out. Well, thank you so much. The Israeli Attorney General today recommended the country's president, Moshe Katsav, be indicted on charges of rape and abuse of power. Oh, my God. How do you like that? Uh -huh. Mr. Katsav, who has been defying calls to resign or step aside when the case against him progresses, has been waiting more than three months for Menachem Mazuz's recommendations. Menachem Mazuz. A final decision on an indictment of the 60-year-old can only be made after a hearing in which he'll be able to present his case. The religious people are keeping the world in the dark ages. Just remember that. The religious, the Getchkis out there, are keeping everybody in the dark ages, in the Stone Age. But according to Ted Haggard, they're all screwing their brains out and having a great gay old time. The Israeli president, who's the country's ceremonial head of state, has denied the charges, claiming he's victim of a conspiracy by political enemies. The charges stem from complaints made by several women who worked for him during his tenure as president, before that as a cabinet minister. In October last year, police said that after months of investigations, they had enough evidence to call for Mr. Kotsov to be charged with rape and sexual assault, as well as fraud, illegal wiretapping, bribery, and obstruction of justice. All of these, All of these things. things. Five women from his office have provided evidence against him, saying that in some cases he forced them to have sex. A further five women made complaints of sexual harassment dating back several years. After the police announcement about the investigation in October was left to Mr. Mazuz to study the evidence. I wonder if he's got a Mazuza on his door. Ooh. Today his office issued a statement saying it collected enough evidence to support an indictment against Mr. Kotsov on charges of rape, harassment, abuse of power, and obstruction of justice, among other things. Mr. Mazuz did not recommend that Kotsov be charged with wiretapping or selling pardons. After the Attorney General's statement, Mr. Kotsov's office said it had no official comment to make. The president enjoys immunity while in office, could be tried only after his resignation or the end of his term, which is later this year. His lawyers have indicated he would resign if he's indicted. Mr. Kotsav, who became president six years ago, was seen as many as a bland political figure until the allegations. See, now that he's been uh, doing all the hanky-spanky, he's not so bland no more. He's an exciting kind of guy, a wild and crazy kind of guy. His position is largely ceremonial. His resignation will not unseat the government. Last October, in the week after the police announcement, he stayed away from the start of the winter session of the Knesset, one of his most visible duties, when he sits around and eats homentasha, and not even on Purim, no less. And also on alternate uh, Wednesdays, he eats treif, just to piss off the really far bison. <laughs> oh, it is so sad. What, what are we doing in this world? You know what I mean? I don't know. Those of us who are not into all this uh, crap, what are we doing? I think, I think we're on the wrong planet. No question. I think I feel like a little out of place with these Getskis, man. What is that all about? With the long beards and the big hats and they smell real bad and the heavy coats in the summertime when it's 100 in the shade. Oy vey. President Bush's approval ratings, and by the way, I should have probably mentioned this earlier. Well, no, this is not the one where it's 28. There was another article that had 28%. This one's still got 33, so we talked about this yesterday. Well, that's not too exciting. I want to see the one that's got 28%. The lowest for any president the day before a State of the Union speech since Nixon in 74. 65% of those surveyed say they disapprove of how Bush is handling his job. Only 33% approve, and those people are intractable and immovable. Remember, it used to be, well, that's about it. It's always about... Uh, about 30, about man. The rating matches Bush's career low in a poll in May of 2006. And are the Democrats really doing anything about it? No. Do they have pres uh, impeachment proceedings? No. Do they have any balls? No. No, but other than that. They talk a game, a little bit of a game, and then Nancy Pelosi comes along and says, Oh, we don't want to do this, and we don't want to do that. And you want to know why? Because they're all a bunch of crooks, and they're all, all owned by pretty much the same bastards. 11.33 on the poll. That's pretty impressive, if you ask me. I'll just read the top few here, because there are just too many on here. Okay. It'll take us up till about 1.30 in the morning to read them all. Ooh. Other than the government, who is effing you the hardest right now? My property insurance company, 306. I'm holding my breath for all those savings we're going to get with that new uh, piece of legislation they passed, but 306 getting screwed bad. The oil company is 167. My health insurance company, 112. My employer slash boss, 93. And way down to the media, 56, which I think the media ought to be doing. Get a lot more credit for screwing up the world. Pelosi, the first female speaker of the House in the history of the United States. The November election signaled a time of change for America, and the Democrats have an ambitious agenda for this great nation. We're going to deal with the war and with the economy. But now, I would like to discuss a subject that has consumed our country. That, of course, is my very large breasts. People have said to me, Nancy, do you use your hooters to advance your political career? 
While it's true that in the past, I've utilized my congressional sweater monkeys to confound and confuse my opponents. Now that I'm Speaker of the Blouse, uh, the House, uh, decorum requires me to dress conservatively while legislating liberally. So those boobs, uh, those boys in the Republican Party can call me Nancy Nipolosi all they want. I will not be distracted from the, ju- the, the job at hand. In this new era of government, the Speaker's tatas are far less important than our unified vision for the, uh, the future. Uh, our unified vision for the... Hey, Kennedy, are you staring at my ass again? I will kill you. 11.45, 15 till noon at 560 WQAM. 1143 votes on the poll. We got a shot today at uh, some number on there. I don't really care what it is, and uh, neither do you. Getting back to uh, Barack Obama and the uh, schmear job that's already gotten underway, and boy, it's, it's only January 23rd, 2007. Yeah, just wait. They're just getting the, they're just greasing up the schmear I mean, mill. Is he a decorated veteran? Because then they'd really have something on him. The minute Senator Barack Obama had traction, the right started emphasizing his middle name, writes Karen Russell in the Huffington Post. Barack Hussein Obama, they sneered. They never talked about him without saying all three names as if the fact his parents gave him the middle name Hussein automatically disqualified him to run for president. The smear was both so dumb and transparent, it was laughable. (laughs) Then other right-wing bigots like Debbie Schlussel took the attack even further. She writes, while Obama may not identify as a Muslim, that's not how the Arab and Muslim streets see it. In Arab culture and under Islamic law, if your father is a Muslim, so are you. And once a Muslim, always a Muslim. You can't go back. In Islamic eyes, Obama is certainly a Muslim. He may think he's a Christian, but they do not. So even if I, he identifies strongly as a Christian, she says, this lunatic, and even if he despised the behavior of his father, as Obama said on Oprah, is a man who Muslims think is a Muslim, who feels some sort of psychological need to prove himself to his absent Muslim father, and who is now moving in the direction of his father's heritage, a man we want as president, when we are fighting the war of our lives against Islam, where would his loyalties be? Is that even the man we want to be a heartbeat away from the presidency if Hillary Clinton offers him the vice presidential candidacy on her ticket, which he certainly wouldn't turn down? No way, Jose, or is that Hussein, she says. Debbie Schlussel, lunatic, uh-huh. miserable, hateful uh-huh. bitch. Then Reverend Sun Myung Moon's Inside Magazine spread the false rumor that Obama secretly attended an Islamic madrasa school as a six-year-old. Apparently, these false rumors prove that Barack Hussein Obama really is a closeted radical Muslim and unfit for office. Per inside, Hillary Clinton's campaign was behind the damaging revelation. Just when you thought the statute of limitations was up on the right, bleeding, it's Clinton's fault, they bring it back with a twist. It's Clinton's fault. Hillary's Clinton's fault. The Inside article cited no evidence or proof that this attack actually came from Clinton. Apparently, Inside wants to divide and conquer the Democrats. They want Obama to think the Clintons are smearing him and cause dissent in the Democratic Party. They get to have their cake and eat it, too. They get to smear Obama and blame their tricks on Clinton. So far, we aren't falling for it. As Media Matters points out, Melanie Morgan, Rush Limbaugh, and Fox's John Gibson also ran with the false rumors. Morgan read from the article and asserted that Clinton is going to try to derail the train before it gets out of the station, adding, and we all know that Hillary Clinton has used private eyes to spy on the private lives of many of her political opponents as well as the girlfriends of her husbands over the years. What about her girlfriends? I don't know, on his program, Limbaugh read the story and claimed, this is Hillary's team doing this. This is not a bunch of Republicans saying this. They wouldn't dare. They don't have the guts. Gibson addressed the Inside Magazine article as his big story at the beginning of the show and again in his My Word segment at the end of the program. After claiming that Clinton has reportedly outed Obama's madrasa past, Gibson told Republican strategist Terry Holt, Now, we've heard about dirty politics before. Republicans aren't involved in this one. Holt responded, This was either a despicable act by an absolutely ruthless Clinton political machine. We know they're capable of doing this. But I also thought, you know, it wasn't directly linked to Hillary Clinton. Holt then speculated that Obama himself could have been behind the story, saying, if you took a page out of the Clinton book and you're really shrewd and you were Barack Obama, you might want to put this out to yourself so you could deal with it early in a political campaign and get it over with. But Holt also noted that a madrasa, before it was politicized and really taken over by the fundamentalists primarily from Saudi Arabia, was nothing more than a parochial school, and Barack Obama was in school 40 years ago. Fox and Friends host Steve Ducey, or is that Ducey, pointed out that madrasas are financed by the Saudis and teach this Wahhabism, which pretty much hates us, then declared, the big question is, was that on the curriculum back then? Later, a caller to the show questioned whether Obama's schooling means that maybe he doesn't consider terrorists the enemy. Fox anchor Brian Kilmeade responded, well, we'll see about that. The fact that Obama attended both a Catholic and a Muslim school in Indonesia is hardly a secret, since he wrote about it in his bestseller, Audacity of Hope. The fact that he was six years old at the time makes this smear a total joke. Plus, Obama is a Christian. He frequently talks about his Christianity and has been a member of Chicago's Trinity United Church of Christ since the 80s. 
So while bashing Hillary for her alleged dirty tricks, the right-wing attack machine gets to use those same false rumors to smear Obama, and they get to distance themselves from the trash-talking and mudslinging by pointing the finger squarely at Hillary. Now that Clinton has announced her committee, I bet they'll be trotting this tactic out with increasing frequency. It didn't take long for the Republican spin machine to play the race card in the blame game. Obviously, they can't use the N-word against Obama, so they start with the M-word and blame Hillary in the process. Just wait. It won't take them long to accuse Obama of using the race card and then crediting Clinton with the attack. I don't know what the context will be, but trust me, it's coming. The reality is that these smears are transparent and make them look desperate. Is this the best they can do? The good news is it shows they're taking Obama's candidacy very seriously. Fasten your seatbelts, Obama. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Writes Karen Russell on the Huffington Post. It's going to be a bumpy ride. He mm -hmm. can handle it. He's the man. I'm telling you right now. All right. You don't, huh? You don't believe me? No, I mean, I hope they, they run him instead of, you know, her. Listen to me. What? He the man. 1,153 votes on the poll. We got a real shot at 1,154 today by the end of the show. WQAM, hello. Marty! <laughs> Marty? Oh, right in the middle of lunch, no less. Sorry to interrupt your lunch, sweetheart. Lunatic. At least it was a different one, though, anyway. 5670560, oh, pound 560 in the Verizon and Singular wireless line. Don't forget, we got the Mad Dog at 2, then the Power Hour, then the Humper Solo 5 to 7. The Beast at the Bank United Center, they really needed that like a hole in the head, like a Lochen Cup, as they say in Finland. Now, there's a place you want to go. It's pretty far, Helsinki. Boy, that is a pretty interesting city. Very uh, unique. Yep. Beautiful people, those Finnish. Mm -mm -mm. I just kind of stood in the streets and I looked around and went, mm -mm, like that. <laughs> Just like that. WQAM, hello. WQAM, hello. QAM, hello. Yo, speaking of produce, you know Joy. Yeah. WQAM, hello. QAM. Hello. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Neil. Yes. What should I eat for lunch? Man, I don't know what to eat. <laughs> like I said, all you people visiting South Florida who've discovered us on the radio, don't look at me. Don't look at me. In fact, don't even look at yourself because I've seen a lot of you. Trust me when I tell you. This is what you got. This is it. This is it. We have arrived. <laughs> and we have. We have arrived at the absolute end of South Florida. It's done. It's, fi it's fini, baby. Speaking of Finland, it's finished. Here's line nine, which is always great. QAM, hello. <laughs> WQAM, hello. Oh, wait a minute. Look at that little box uh -oh. came up. I got it. While you Good fix your it. box. WQAM, hello. Bill. Yes, sir. Right, George. No, I couldn't get his phone. Okay, good. I'm glad to hear it. WQAM, hello. QAM. Now, see, that's interesting because the arrow came on, it went out, and the line is still flashing again like I never picked <laughs> it up. Interesting. WQAM, hello. WQAM, hello. QAM. The power of Christ. Now, what would you cut him off for? He's right in the middle of a good one. I know. 11.57. I think we may be uh, finished with the calls today. I'm not really sure. I, I'm, you know, I have to consult oh, with myself. Well, they've been so good. They have been. Uh, we, in the first, I don't know, in the first hour, did we have like one or two real ones, or did we even try? I don't know. No. We did not? So in other Chris words, remembers. Or, who? I said, I'm glad Chris remembers, because I sure don't. No, I'm, I'm trying to forget as fast as I possibly can. But this is what, of course, everybody wants, including Jolly Joe, man, who called yesterday. I already told you that. 1,160 votes on the poll. This is what they want. They're all expert programmers. In fact, they're probably having a programming conference right now with that punk in Hialeah, the one that does the limbo rock in Westland in the tea room there under the uh, bathroom stalls. Well, maybe he'll have some. In fact, they're probably having a programming conference right now with that punk in Hialeah, the one that does the limbo rock in Westland in the tea room there under the uh, bathroom stalls. Well, maybe he'll have some good ideas for them. I got news for her. For the other day, parts couldn't hurt. Uh, some of them. But nevertheless, I didn't really say that, did I? Huh? What did you say? Uh -huh. I wasn't listening. Let's hear it. Here's the nominees, by the way, for the Academy Awards. Any interest? No. Not, no, not really. Because I didn't see any of these movies. Didn't see one. Best Picture, Babel, and when Leo DiCaprio and Will Smith are up for the best actor, that, that tells you it's all over. There is no hope. Oh, I agree. Actress, Penelope Cruz for Revolver. 
Judy Dench, Notes on a Scandal. Helen Mirren for The Queen. Meryl Streep for The Devil Wears Prada. And Kate Winslet for Little Children. Little Chillins. Best Supporting Actor, Alan Arkin, Little Miss Sunshine. Jackie Earl Haley, Little Chillins. D- Jimon Hansu for Blood Diamond. Who's that? Jimon Hansu. He's what? I don't know. Eddie Murphy for Dream Girls and Mark Wahlberg for The Departed. Eddie Murphy is still alive? That's bad news. Best Supporting Actress, Adriana Barraza for Babel. Kate Blanchett, Notes on a Scandal. Boy, she bugs me. Boy, she is so meas. I don't know. She just... And, of course, I think the only movie I ever saw her in was The Talented Mr. Ripley. But, boy, she, she was perfect for that role. A real meas kite. Abigail Breslin, Little Miss Sunshine. Jennifer Hudson, Dream Girls. And Rinko Kikuchi for Babel. Best Director, Alejandro Gonzalez Iritu, Iratu, Inaritu, whatever then for Babel. Martin Scorsese for The Departed. Clint Eastwood, Letters from Iwo Jima. Stephen Frears for The Queen. And Paul Greengrass for United 93. And then it's got foreign language film and bada beep, bada boop, bada bop, original screen. Uh, animated feature film and Paul Greengrass for United 93. And then it's got foreign language film and bada beep, bada boop, bada bop, original screen. Uh, animated feature film, Cars, Happy Feet, and Monster House. Okay. Well, there's, there's a whole, but there's 80 million different categories, but I don't think, I don't think we want to go there, do we? Mm. Kill some really good time. Mm. Not a good idea. Mm. Don't want to go there. Girlfriend. It's like the phone. Don't want to go there, you know what I mean? You can apologize. No, no chance. Uh, it beat at 12 to 1 hour on WQAM. Well, I never thought I'd find the kind of ride that I've been tooling around in today. Now, it's a classic set of wheels fixed up the way a brother would like it. Now it's been clean and shiny and the trim is cold and it dies under my seat. I got the can of liquid cherry yolk. Aw, oh, baby. Coconut, granada, cherry, cherry, and me, baby blue. Aw, oh, baby. Shiny little velvet, little smelly machine. Took the suspension down so I bounced down the road in a pit that is super flyway. Now with the heart to stop, no big deal. Someday I'll get around to fixing the brakes. A 1979 Bomb Bomb Catalina. She's so looking fine now. It's my baby Cadillac. Aw, oh, baby. Coconut, granada, cherry, cherry, and me, baby. Aw, oh, baby. Shiny little velvet, little smelly machine. Yo! Got my windows down on a hot summer day Cause the AC don't work no way The sweaty crash fell off seats Starts to smell and gets the dusty working over time And on my back seat you'll find a shiny ground that smell like lime Max my carpet shiny too Cause I'll be washing it with armor on Oh baby Over the granada cherry cherry it be Oh baby Microscopic wheels going over speed bumps ain't too smooth. Ah, baby. Fresh from our interior, be fancy to me, baby. Ah, baby. Hey, 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 hey. You like it? Come on, three. I love it at 560 WQAM. Happy Tuesday to you. I might just take the um, monitor up here, the one that's got the phone thing on it, you know, mm-hmm. and just uh, throw it out the window. Ooh. Take a picture. That's something to think about. In fact, I'm going to reach over and shut it off today. Today is just, yesterday we actually did have a few calls. Remember that? Mm-hmm. I mean, like real living and breathing people. It just isn't in the cards today, okay? <laughs> it's just one of those things. And I'm not going to... Uh, We're going to apologize. No chance. Not going to do that. I mean, there's, there's no point in beating a dead horse's head. <clears throat> Everybody's a programming expert. In the meantime, in the middle of a QAM disaster... I mean, disaster in the fall rating book. Uh, we uh, kicked some serious ass. You know, and if it wouldn't have been such a disaster, the numbers would have been really spectacular. I mean, through the roof. But even in spite of that... We're number one, damn it! And it would seem to me that during the first fall months, I don't think I took very many phone calls. Didn't most of that time I had the phone shut down, most of it? Most of the time. Yeah. So maybe there are certain people out there who are just uh, in desperate need of... Hi! Hi! <laughs> 
and Jamba. And that, I, I'm not interested. It's just, if that's what you want to do on your show, go right ahead. It's just of uh, no interest to me. It's boring. It is yeah, we ponderous. Could, we could cart that up. It, we could do what? Cart those up and just drop them in periodically. That's true. Right? Just, just like, uh, 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 like that. Uh-huh. What did you say? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Bill Gallagher, who writes for the Niagara Falls Reporter, says, Sorry, State of the Union won't be addressed in Bush's stupid speech. Stupid is as stupid does. He says, The State of the Union is sad and shattered. After six years, the man who peddled himself as a uniter has torn our nation apart and ripped us away from the international community. President Bush has systematically alienated most of the world and inflamed unprecedented hostility toward the U.S., both from traditional friends and from an increasing number of angry people in the nations Bush has invaded, insulted, isolated, and ignored. The State of the Union address is always more political theater than substance, but we can usually extract a few telling nuggets from the speech and the interaction of the President, the members of Congress, and the audience. Then, of course, we must endure the ridiculous spinning from the assembled politicos and pundits. Watching the first woman ever to preside at the event of the first Democrat in 12 years will be sweet, but House Speaker Nancy Pelosi will have to endure an hour pose next to Vice President Dick Cheney. Here's an important measurement. How many times will Big Dick stayed and somber in his Republican blue power suit give his puppet a dutiful standing ovation as the stylish Pelosi remains staunchly seated in her dynamically colored outfit? The response of members of Congress to Bush's umpteenth promise to achieve victory in Iraq will be revealing. The disastrous war of choice remains the critical issue of our times, the most damaging foreign policy blunder in U.S. history, and the emblem of Bush's failed presidency. The body language of presidential hopefuls listening to Bush as he twangs his untruths will be entertaining. Senator John McCain of Arizona will be jumping to his feet the most, clapping enthusiastically to impress Bush's base, and showing his support for the most inept commander-in-chief ever to address Congress. Hillary and Senator Barack Obama will get plenty of attention. Other than welcoming Bush, the two will be wise to sit on their derrieres and hands throughout the entire speech. Head shaking and looks of scorn and disbelief will help, too. The other would-be Democratic presidential nominees, Joe Biden of Delaware, Chris Dodd of Connecticut, and John Kerry of Massachusetts, will strive for but certainly not get the attention sure to be heaped on Clinton and Obama. Senator Jew Lapdog Lieberman of Connecticut will be stalking the president to give him a warm hug and hope for another peck on the cheek. Since Lieberman already spends most days publicly kissing Bush's ass, their Tuesday night intimacy should be understated. Lieberman had the nerve to accuse critics of Bush's war, uh, Iraq war policies of engaging in excessive partisanship and rancor. We're supposed to forget that in the last election, Bush claimed people voting to elect Democrats to Congress want the terrorists to win. Lieberman, the sanctimonious hypocrite, never took issue with any of Bush's excessive partisanship then. Here's one for you, Joe, including the rancor. The very sight of you and the sound of your whining voice makes me physically ill. I second that emotion. Yeah. White House spokesman Tony Snow says Bush will depart from the typical State of the Union address and avoid the usual recitation of the traditional laundry list of administration proposals. Instead, Snow assures us, Bubble Boy Bush hopes to connect with the American people on the challenges ahead. In fact, our greatest challenge is enduring two more years of Bush. It will be a relatively brief speech, Snow says, and Bush will focus on the major issues, including the war on terror, energy, health care, immigration, and education. Bush has failed miserably on every one of those issues. Just ask yourself, are you better off? Question Ronald Reagan famously posed. Is the state of our union better today than it was six years ago when Bush, the, main, the man five partisans on the Supreme Court selected to be president, took the oath of office? The only people who will answer yes are the super rich, the supremely partisan, the uninformed, and those impervious to the truth. The war in Iraq has fostered terrorism and spawned an entire new generation of young people growing up with the trauma of violence and war shaping their very existence. Bush will certainly not mention that the United Nations reported more than 34,000 Iraqis were killed in 2006. Such troubling statistics clutter a State of the Union address. Bush's plan to send more troops into Baghdad will only result in more Iraqi and American deaths and do nothing to pacify the nation thrust into civil war as a result of the invasion and incompetent occupation. The only hope is a political so uh, solution. Bush will never even consider that approach. The Bush administration sees the pursuit of force as a faith, writes Tom Engelhardt, who writes TomDispatch.com, a regular antidote to the mainstream media. In a recent article titled The Look of War Against Islam, George Bush's Crusading Scorecard, Engelhardt provides a scathing analysis of the administration's continuing miscalculations and its insensitivity toward the realities in Iraq and the religious tones in the conflict. Engelhardt sees the surge bringing more death and destruction to Baghdad, home to nearly a quarter of Iraq's population. He predicts more suffering. It's a formula for catastrophe, and with the possible exception of the president, the vice president, and a dwindling number of hangers-on, like Julie Lieberman and the Fox News Channel, the folks Condi Rice loves, the truth is that everyone in Washington and the world knows it. Angle Hart sees the shallowness and bluster in the Bolshevik worldview, rooted in military solutions and messianic violence. 
The essential doctrine of faith that ties all the disparate foreign policy acts of this administration together is the belief that to every global problem, to every difficult situation, there is but a single striking and uniform response, not the application of democracy, but the application of force. The terrorists hate us for our freedoms, Bush proclaims, as he tramples on the Bill of Rights at home, condones torturing and kidnapping, and operates the illegal gulag at Guantanamo Bay. Bush, like no other president before, is assaulting our fundamental freedoms and the core values of our national virtue. He claims the powers of a monarch and seeks to undermine the state of our cherished liberties, all in the name of protecting us. The Bush energy policy is simple. Consume oil, seek more oil, and do nothing to pursue energy alternatives. He'll drop a few disingenuous lines about ending our dependence on Middle Eastern oil, but never do anything to upset the Bush family entwinement with the Saudi royal family's interest and their shared corporate sponsors, Halliburton, Exxon, Chevron, BP, and lots of others. While the Brazilians have shown how ethanol and agriculturally based fuels work, Bush will again plead for defiling the Arctic for a short-term boost of domestic oil production. He'll say little, if anything, about energy and the environment. Global warming is a liberal myth, something Al Gore invented, the Bolsheviks and the talk radio cheerleaders claim. Bush severed the U.S. from any responsibility to reduce greenhouse gases when he gave the finger to the Kyoto Accords. He then mounted the greatest government assault on science since the Vatican tried to silence Copernicus for reporting the Earth was not the center of the universe. Healthcare will get another market-driven solution that will never work. Nearly 50 million Americans have no health insurance and the number is growing. Our system is a failure, a costly bill-shuffling game, most benefiting the drug industry, insurance companies, for-profit hospitals, and the Republican candidates they sponsor. We remain the only industrialized nation without a single-payer system, a severe competitive disadvantage for American manufacturers and businesses. The solution is simple. Bush could urge that every American receive the same health insurance that he and members of Congress are entitled to. He never will. Bush will give some lip service to immigration reform, but will use none of his greatly diminished political capital to do anything meaningful about it. He still supports building a stupid fence along the Mexican border to humor uh, Republican lawmakers. Bush's education policies are little more than a boom for private testing services and do nothing to address the needs of public education. Americans still lag behind other industrialized nations in the quality of primary and high school education. Absent from Bush's list of major issues is fiscal responsibility, and for good reason. He's drained the U.S. Treasury, borrowing money to cover tax cuts that mainly benefit the richest 1%. Bush has dramatically shifted the burden for the cost of government from the investor classes to the working classes and created unconscionable debt in the process. He's put the nation on the track of a fiscal train wreck. Ben Bernanke, the chairman of the Federal Reserve Board, knows this gloomy reality Bush will never acknowledge. He warned last week if early and meaningful action is not taken, the U.S. economy could be seriously weakened. The state of our union is in shambles. George W. Bush and the people who put him in office and continue to support him are responsible for this monumental mess who writes Bill Gallagher, a Peabody Award winner, former Niagara Falls City Councilman. That's Peabody. There you go with that Peabody, Peabody massive. Peabody. Mr. Peabody, was it Peabody or Peabody? You take your pick. Well, sure. Whatever. How are we doing on that poll? We got 1,200 yet? 1,191. Pretty, we're right on the ass well, I got 1,194. We're right on the ass end of 12. When we come back from the break, we'll have over 1,200 votes on the poll. 1,137 MySpace members. The phone thing is shut off. What's not to like? Oh! That's right. Twelve minutes past noon at 560 WQM. Chris said to me before the show today, he said he wanted to thank me for being one of the few people on the air on this radio station and maybe in the universe who doesn't need to be directed when it's time to take a break. Told him. Absolutely like that? correct, sir. At any rate, I got my log here. You know, right. I got my log. My it's Lincoln log. ruin his ability to work with anyone else. Well, that's good. Maybe Maddie Bell will come along, offer him a job under his desk. Our friends at Brandy Shoes want to ask you, is Brian Schmutz an idiot? And, of course, the answer is yeah. absolutely. Schmendrick. Hey, Brian. Is there anything you want to do about it? Yeah, a gun would be good. Since the Iraqis are becoming too dependent on the United States. And, therefore, we will force a collapse of the Iraqi government and tear the country apart. Let me be clear. I blew up one of the holiest shrines in Shia Islam in a calculated effort to provoke Iraq's Shia population to retaliate. The responsibility rests with me. The strategy worked. And the result was a vicious cycle of sectarian violence that continues today. The Sunni and Shia want to live together in peace. And we will not allow them to reestablish it in Iraq. From Afghanistan to Lebanon to the Palestinian territories. Millions of ordinary people are sick of the violence and want a future of peace and opportunity for their children. And it is unacceptable to me. On Friday, Secretary Rice will leave for the region to topple moderate governments, create chaos in the region, and use oil revenues to form death squads. Fellow citizens, 
mass killings is the calling of our time. Thank you, and good night. Oh, yeah, and good night, nurse. 1218 at 560 WQ. I bet you we got 1,200 votes on the poll. I haven't looked. Let me take a puke. 1205 is what I got here right now. 1205 at 1218. 1207. You got 1207 at 1218? Mm -hmm. Well, how do you like that? Maybe we'll get 1219 at 1219. Wouldn't that be? That would really we'll mean something, that. wouldn't it? No. Absolutely not. Why don't you pay attention? Uh, see, I almost start giving the numbers out again. Then I realize, well, you know, oh, yeah. keep them off the street anyway. You can call. I'm not going to see the. I'm not going to take any. I'm sure I'm not going to even see the thing ringing because I got that machine shut off, baby. It's a dead machine right now. Mm -hmm. You'll be calling into a dead piece. See, I should stick with my guns. I told you this uh, many, many weeks ago. Remember, I went through that whole rap about you know you have to um, keep up with whatever whatever is happening. Yeah. yeah. And there are certain things that have run their course, and that's one of them. That, that's just not part of the show anymore. It's not, never going to be. And, you know, Joyce can sit around and write a bunch of stupid letters, and basically, of course, that should have happened months and months ago, and these people should all be in court sued like crazy right now. But this company isn't going to do that. And when I get a phone call from uh, Smokey Joe yesterday saying he didn't want to call to congratulate me about the ratings until the, those letters have been sent out, that and 14 pounds of fried bologna are going to accomplish the same thing, mm. okay? Underline the bologna part. Fried bologna. So like I told you, I'm going to do the show the way I want to do the show. How do you like that? Oh, who the hell do you think you are? Neil Rogers show. That's right. Look at what I know about it. First of March, which is only a little over a month away, will be 31 years I've been doing this god-awful crap in this horseball town, and somehow I've managed to survive pretty damn well. Thank you. You're welcome. What did I just say? Exactly. She knows. <laughs> Even that bitch knows. She knows, and she's a stranger. I don't know her from Adam, okay? And she's a stranger. <laughs> This is from CommonDreams.org. Bush faces open revolt over failed Iraq policies. It's revolting, baby, just like him. Revolting. An increasingly isolated President Bush heads into tonight's State of the Union speech facing mounting opposition to his failed Iraq war policies and escalating defections from his own party. Bush's decision to send more troops to Iraq brought increasing Republican opposition yesterday as the Democratic-led Senate panel prepared tough questioning for the man who would carry out the plan as the new war commander. With opinion polls showing Bush's approval rating at the lowest point for an American president since Richard Nixon resigned in disgrace in 74, Bush faces a serious crisis of confidence from all fronts. White House sources tell Capitol Hill Blue that the president is visibly angered by increasing Republican opposition to his Iraq war policies and that the West Wing operates today under a siege mentality. Staff members say they were aware of eroding public and political support for the president, but add that no one is willing to confront Bush on the issue. The ship of state is sinking, and the lifeboats are full, says one senior staff member. It's sinking and stinking. On Capitol Hill, Lieutenant General David P uh, Petraeus testifies today in a bid for a fourth star and commanded the Iraq War. Petraeus would replace General George Casey, who's been tapped to become the next Army Chief of Staff. Petraeus, a former division commander once ahead of the Iraqi training mission, is considered a shoo-in for the position, devoted early in the war to trying to win the hearts and minds of Iraqis. Petraeus later wrote the Pentagon Manual, How to Tackle Insurgencies. He also previously supported expanding U.S. forces in the region, but Petraeus will have a tough sell before the Senate Armed Services Committee, which must approve his nomination. If he's going to back the president in sending 21,500 troops in addition to the estimated 130,000 already there. Senator John Warner of Virginia and two other Republicans yesterday announced legislation denouncing the increase as House leadership drafted what they called strategic benchmarks for the war. How much louder and how much clearer does the opposition to his plan need to be before the president will begin to listen and respond to the voices of the American people, the generals, and a bipartisan majority of Congress? Senator Ted Kennedy said a day before Bush was scheduled to give his annual State of the Union address. Kennedy and other lawmakers on the Armed Services panel were expected to ask Petraeus whether he thought the added troops would make a difference in Iraq. Critics of the plan contend ground commanders haven't been clamor have been, uh, not been clamoring for more troops. Warner, a former Navy Secretary and Defense Hawk, who chaired the panel until this year, is likely to provide political cover for members worried of the war plan, but reluctant to embarrass a GOP president. His resolution, backed by Senators Susan Collins of Maine, Norman Coleman of Minnesota, and Ben Nelson of Nebraska, would say the Senate disagrees with the plan to augment U.S. forces and that the president should consider options that would achieve strategic goals with fewer troops than sending another 21,500. I feel ever so strongly that the American GR was not trained, not sent over, certainly not by resolution of this institution, to be placed in the middle of a fight between the Sunni and the Shiite and the wanton, incomprehensible killing that's going on at this time, Warner told reporters on Monday. Where's that wanton, as in soup? Mm. The wanton killing, baby. They're wanting it. The resolution is similar to one offered last week by Chuck Hagel of Nebraska, Joe Biden of Delaware, and Carl Levin of Michigan. Biden's running for president. Hagel's a potential candidate in 2008. 
Since Bush announced his plan on January the 10th, Congress has been deeply split on how to react. Senate and House Democratic leaders backed the resolution drafted by Hake 11 and Biden. That measure will likely be voted on by the Senate Foreign Relations Committee tomorrow and sent to the floor where GOP leaders have vowed a filibuster. While the various measures have varying amounts of support, none carries the weight of the law that would bar the President as Commander-in-Chief from deploying military personnel as he sees fit. Warner said he believed his plan would offer broader appeal among Republicans than Hagel's proposal, while largely similar, Warner's measure leaves open the possibility of Bush sending small numbers of troops to certain areas such as Anbar Province and avoids terms some say are partisan. It's a stronger message when it has significant bipartisan support. This resolution will really, I think, be a very strong message to the White House, Nelson said, but not every member is willing to sign on. It declares General Petraeus' new strategy a failure before it has a chance to be implemented, said redneck Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina. You know Lindsey Graham, that drooling yeah, redneck? You. House Republican leader John Boehner of Ohio said he told the president support is still strong among Republicans, but there are a lot of members who are skeptical that the plan will work because of doubts that the Iraqi government will follow through on its commitments. And what's really nauseating, and one of the many, many reasons I won't watch one second of it, is that every one of these State of the Union uh, speeches, it's the same crap, you know? Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States, and here he comes through the big door, and they're all standing, yay, in a big ovation, and he's smiling, and they're all like shaking his hand and patting him on the ass and Rectum. the usual crap, you know? Instead of booing and screaming and saying, you butcher, you murderer, you bloody lunatic, you maniac, resign right here tonight, please. It's, it's just a dog and pony show, that's all it ever is. Right. And he'll stand up there and talk the usual BS, and like Doug Thompson says, he'll lie through his teeth, and they all go, oh, yeah. You know, all the same crap. And that's what you're stuck in. The, it's, it's like us. It's like the non getchki crowd, the non-believers, man. The people with a half a brain and able to use it. Stuck in the middle of a world where all these crazy religions are busy killing each other. And sometimes some of us, and they, you know, we get caught in the fallout. Wrong place, wrong time. Crap like that. 1,221 votes on the poll. Can I vent just a minute? I only got a minute before the break anyway. Go ahead. Well, no, I, might, I might vent for an hour on this. See, I want to, you know, this, this is directed, and it's lunch hour. Maybe he's in the car listening, maybe not. And I could have told him this on the phone yesterday, but I'm not looking for any confrontation. I show up every day, do the best damn thing I can for them, you know. And we made the bonus. We're number one. It's, without any promotion, without any support, without any help from Joyce Fitch, corporate at any level, in any possible way. I have a real good idea of what this business is all about. I've been in this business since I was 17 years old. I'm 164 now, okay? I've been almost 50 years in this business, almost 31 years in this market. I have a real good idea of what I want this show to be, who I want to talk to, and the people I'm interested in talking to are not the people who are on the phone going, Jamba! and these other mental retards, okay? If Joe Bell finds those people entertaining, I suggest that he give them his cell phone number, or maybe I'll give it out on the air, and he can entertain them himself. They add nothing to my life. They're a deterrent to the show and the success of this program, and I'm going to do the show the way I believe in doing it, period. What are you laughing about? Oh, I saw something funny on TV. Yeah, let, let's, give, let's give them all his phone number, and he can spend the rest of his life and the rest of his work days on this uh, station, however many there might be, talking to Chamba, Hi, Prozac, Hi, and that crowd, you know. George is gay. You know, the, the same three people, that's what we're talking about. I don't need to do a show for those three people, okay? There's 80 zillion people, at least, well, maybe not 80 zillion. About 30, man. 30 people out there who actually listen and enjoy the show. Who's going to give Ricky a blow? You might have noticed that Indianapolis Colts quarterback Peyton Manning does a lot of commercials. A lot of commercials. In fact, he doesn't seem to turn anyone down. As a result, here's Peyton Manning for Metamucil laxatives. It's okay, Fred. They're not saying boom. They're saying bowel moo. Bush, you can do it. Good. Here's Peyton Manning for Playboy. Spank that meat. Spank that meat. Ooh, what a centerfold. And here's Peyton Manning for Playgirl. Pick out this month's Playgirl magazine, especially if you're into, I don't know, six foot four quarterbacks with a laser rocket arm and buns of steel if you're into that maybe and finally here's peyton manning for viagra it's okay johnny you still got the best in the neighborhood even though it's a little flaccid right now brother what can i say after that you know huh probably not what did you say huh oh yeah you're fibbing 1232, 28 to 1 at QM, Mad Dog at 2, and then uh, Humper and the Mad Dog together. That power hour didn't exactly, uh, you know, 
It didn't power its way through. It, it was okay. And then Hank followed it up with a, I think he had the best sports hour, didn't he, between the five and six? It's a three-hour power hour next week. What do you mean by that? Uh, that's what that promo we ran before. The, um, oh, like I was listening? Three hour, well, you know. It's going to be three hours and uh, over at, I guess, the media center. Oh, you mean for the stupid bowl? Yep. Who cares about that? Oh, that's right, you do. I forgot. Well, you were asking about it before, what they were talking about, what uh, that caller was talking about. I don't care what the caller was talking about. I don't care about the callers, period. Anyway, yeah, three seven. No, actually, it was a pretty good goose up from a, a very weak three to four hour, two three, three seven and a four o'clock hour, and then a four six. That was the only time any of the sports hours had more than a four share. In fact, the three seven was the only time. Well, it was, it was pretty, pretty depressing, is what it was. But you continue uh, working on it. You fix the parts, the day parts that need some fixing and working on. Okay, Jersey, uh, Smokey Joe, whatever it is. Are they gonna start playing tapes? Yeah, they're going to start playing some of the tapes from games from uh, 72 and 73 when the Dolphins won the Stupid Bowl with Rick Weaver calling the game. So let's start playing some of those tapes so everybody can live in the past. This show doesn't need any assistance. We need technical assistance, which we don't get at all, which, oh, of no. course, I forgot to mention that to him yesterday. Wait. I mean, well, well, what's the use? Gornish Telfin. They replaced all the buttons, remember? Or at least the, the lights. Here. What about there? No, no, here, yeah. Oh, did they do that, too? It's like a wow, Christmas tree. What a major tree. accomplishment. Wow. I can like look down Hanukkah and see boy. what's on and what's off for the yeah. first time since I can't remember when. Fix I it, think fix what it. would be a really good assumption for Jersey Joe or Smokey Joe or Jolly Wally Joe or whatever we're calling him this week, Schmendrick Joe, to make was that we got some idea what we're doing here. We don't need any tapes. We don't need to be told to take any phone call. Not, not that we were told because he would never have the balls to tell me that, but it doesn't need to be suggested that it's so much better the way you interact with the callers. There aren't any callers. Don't you understand? There there aren't any callers. I mean, I may be pretty stupid and an emotional old queen in my old age and whatever else I am, and I don't apologize for any of that, okay? I am. And you notice lately I've been just letting it all hang right out there. I don't hold anything Ew, back. You look at that. Yeah, let it hang Tuck out. Tuck it back in. Yeah, trust me, you won't see a thing. <laughs> Believe me, unless you've got real good eyesight. So I'm going to, like I said, and I, I said this weeks ago, and everything was going along just fine, and then I get, uh, you know, pressured, indirectly pressured into this. You know, I allow myself to get suckered into that crap, and there it is again, the same swill. If it was me, I'd have Luca Brazzi visit. We got all the addresses on those letters there. I say, have Luca Brazzi visit their homes and break their legs and their vocal cords. Probably still wouldn't help, you know what I mean? Yeah, like that. Don Corleone. That's who we need. Alistair Doyle. I wonder if he's akin to Alistair Schnook. Who? Says UN climate panel to project wrenching change. Uh oh. Like I said, it's a good thing I'm going to be dead pretty soon. Because once all the floods come, once Lake Ontario is up to the 85th floor of my uh, building here, Alistair Doyle says the UN climate panel will project wrenching disruptions to nature by 2100. Oh, we're all going to be dead by then. That's uh, 93 years away. Do we have anybody in the audience who's going to be alive in 93 years? No. No. In a report next week blaming human use of fossil fuels more clearly than ever for global warming, scientific sources be sand. A draft report based on work by 2,500 scientists and due for release on February 2 in Paris draws on research showing greenhouse gases at their highest levels for 650,000 years, fueling a warming likely to bring more droughts, floods, and rising seas. The report by the Intergovernmental Plan Panel on Climate Change may have some good news, however, by toning down chances of the biggest temperature and sea level rises projected in the IPCC's previous 2001 study, the sources said. But it will also revise up its lowest projections. The main good news is that we have a clearer idea of what we're up against, one source said. The report will set the tone for work in extending the UN's Kyoto Protocol, the main international plan for curbing global warming beyond 2012. The IPCC says it is at least 90% sure that human activities led by burning fossil fuels are to blame for a warming over the past 50 years. At least 90% sure. The draft conclusion that the link is very likely would mark a strengthening from likely in the 2001 report, a probability of 66 to 90%. Quite often, much of the debate is what level of certainty do we have around some of these phrases, said Robert Watson. World Bank chief scientist who chaired the previous 2001 report. Scientists and representatives of governments will meet in Paris from January 29 to review the draft and approve a text. Watson declined to predict any of the 2007 conclusions. Elementary, my dear Watson. But the sources said the new report is likely to foresee a rise in temperatures of 2 to 4.5 degrees Celsius. That's 3.6 to 8.1 degrees Fahrenheit this century, with about 3 Celsius, 5.4 Fahrenheit most likely. The 2001 report said temperatures could rise by 1.4 to 5.8 Celsius by 2100, but didn't say by which end of the range is most likely. That's 2.5 to 10.4 degrees Fahrenheit. 
So instead of like 90 degrees in the shade, it'll be 100 degrees in the shade with a humidity of about 189. You'll be schwitzing over there. The IPCC would also narrow the 2001 forecast range of sea levels rise of 9 to 88 CMS centimeters by 2100. Bjorn Lomberg, the Danish author of The Skeptical Environmentalist, said the IPCC would discredit the rhetoric of catastrophe that he accused some governments of adopting. Yes, climate change is a problem, but it's not this overarching, civilization-destroying thing that the rhetoric of today is telling us, he said. Even so, however, the European Union says any temperature rise above 2 degrees Celsius, 3.6 degrees Fahrenheit, would cause dangerous change, for instance, with more heat waves like the one in Europe in 2003 that killed 35,000 people, which you'll recall, and I was actually there during part of that time. We were schwitzing, baby. It was hotter than hell, and believe me, it's good practice for me because I'm going to be burning there a long time. Even the minimum predicted shifts in climate for the 21st century are likely to be significant and disruptive. The U.N. Climate Secretariat says of the 2001 projection of a minimum 1.4 Celsius rise. It says the top of the range will be catastrophic. Temperatures have risen 0.6 degrees Celsius, that's 1.1 degree Fahrenheit since 1900, and the ten warmest years since records began in the 1850s have been since 1994. The world has warmed about 5 Celsius, 9 degrees Fahrenheit since the last ice age. We're melting over here, you got it? I'd get a good rubber raft. Keep that one, uh, you know, a lot of you people that use the rubber raft. I saved here. mine. Good. Good thinking. It's in the garage. Benjamin Santer, a climate scientist at the U.S. Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, said research in the last decade had expanded from studying surface temperatures to everything from ocean heat content to glacial retreat. He says the system is telling us an internally consistent story. You can't explain the observed changes in the climate system over the second half of the 20th century by invoking natural causes. He said he did not know the IPCC view. We're schwitzing over here, baby. Yeah, give me a good air conditioner is what I do. Or get, find somebody who with a fan, you know. Not an electric yeah. fan. I'm talking about somebody who will fan you. Find a good fan. i got some fans right. out there. They'll fan you? I don't know if my fans will fan me, but i got some fans out there. i got some people who actually, you know, actually say not real nice things about me, but just, you know, you're okay. <laughs> you're never still afraid. To... <laughs> there you go. Oh, hey, I'd take that. It is most amusing. Well, I, you know. There are people that uh, they don't want to get carried away. With me, I go overboard. I'm an old fart now, and I go overboard with people. And I, you know, I kissy, kissy, kissy with people I like. And, with, and, and the return is always, well, you're, not, you're okay. Uh. <laughs> like that. Okay. Well, listen, what am I supposed to expect? Do I expect, like, uh, you know, that's all I expect. I'm pleased with whatever I can get. Like a smile, Good. a smirk. Like, eh, you're okay. And then they run like hell. 1,242 votes on the poll. And with all those choices on the poll, if I read it twice, we can be out of here by two. Criminalized pot in... Florida. Absolutely. Yes. All right. Don't like all the harper. Dum, dum, dum. Every time I see Abu Dhar Red. Dum, 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 dum. That retarded dim witch. Dum, dum, dum. On my TV. <laughs> President of Republican muscle in and an articulate idiot. I don't know why they would want this guy, but now he's here. We're screwed the next four years with President Thumb. Stupid key. Find this drunk and rich kid. He's even dumber than me. <laughs> He's president of s. <laughs> you don't care what it took. You got him in by hook or crook. The Christian right knows what's best for you and I, but have no fear. We've got a great leader. President Dump. Oi! President Dump. 1246. So we got the uh, triple power hour next week. I just heard that promo there again. Triple power hour, 3 to 6. Well, what's that uh, mean? Is that to move up the big hype for the Super Bowl? Is that what that's all about? Correct. I see. Well, that's something, okay? It's a little something. Not a big Timmis, but it's a little something. 
In other words, it's like it's like who wants to be a millionaire? If it was good once a week, let's put it on 85 million times a week. It's really good. Nice going, Joe. 1,253 votes on the poll. We got a shot at, uh, I don't know, 1,300. And Other than we'll the government. One. I beg your pardon? And then we'll be number one. Yeah, if we can get 1,300 votes on the poll today, I guarantee you. We're number one, damn it! And if we only get 1,254, we're still number one. See, there, I mean, over the years, knock on wood, over almost 31 years, I've had a lot of real great rating success in this market. And, you know, there are certain ones that you're more proud of than others. And we've had a lot higher numbers on this station than we had in this last fall book. But when you consider the context of what we got, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, I think it's pretty dang good. we done dang good. It's a miracle is what it is. In fact, in that December month when everybody else got, when there were day parts that had a 0 0.3, a oh! 0.3, what is that? That's not even enough to shake the transmitter for crying out loud. That's not enough vibration from the final tubes in the transmitter to even kill those dead rats in there. Maybe that's what you smell. Where is the transmitter, by the way? It's out by the... Where is it? I don't know. Out on an island somewhere. Is it really? Last I heard. Hopefully our engineering department's out there, too, because they sure as hell aren't in the building doing any work for us. I'll guarantee you that. They are pathetic. No, no. They are an embarrassment, and they're degrading and humiliating. You should see how bright these light bulbs are. Yeah, the light exactly. bulbs they got. In fact, that's where they would have been good at the light bulb. 1,400 there with Norma Kent and Joyce Kaufman in that crowd. And Mr. Ego with his uh, peppercorn shosh and his Parmesan cheese. What a, what a market, man. What an, what an absolute, it's just, you know. Money is good, though. I'll take it. Other than the government, who is effing you the hardest right now? My property insurance company, 332. The oil company is 188. My health insurance company, 127. My employer or boss, 100. Well, what's, I don't understand. What's the difference between my employer slash boss? I, I guess employer implies company and boss is the specific individual. One schmuck? Yeah. I see. Like, like Joyce, who we work for. The media, 62. My power company, FPL, 55. My spouse, 50. I hate this poll, 46. 3.6%. My credit card company, 42. My homeowners and or condo association, 41. 41. What do you say? You heard me. Cut the crap, 41. There is no excuse for that. Okay, sorry. Well, I'm old. My drug dealer, 38. The drug company is 35. My ex-spouse and a partner, th uh, how many has that got? About 30, man. My ex-spouse, my ex, lacks. My cable satellite dish provider, 25. My girlfriend or boyfriend, 20. My internet service provider, 19. My bank, 16. My kids, 13. My doctor, 6. Hello, doctor. My realtor, 5. I'm sure that there are some real doctors in Florida. I haven't encountered too many of them, but I'm sure there are a couple. My preacher, rabbi, cleric, uh, getchke, whatever, 5. And still my stockbroker, Solamente Uno. Well, that's good. Let's uh, hit up the audience for some money. They must be making some real cash. All right. All right. 1,254 votes. So we got the 1,254 we wanted. And like I said, you know what that means, beyond a shadow of a doubt, with 1,254. We're number one, damn it! Now, how's that QM.com come thing that, uh, coming along that Josh is working so hard on? Oh, I hear the promos for it. Well, that's not an answer that's, to my that's, question. That's all I know about it. That's it. I've heard promos. Well, I know he's working feverishly right. to make that thing. The in promos world say... World-class website. The promos say that it's great. Yeah, the promos say the station is great, too. Agents find cocaine in broccoli load. See, I bet you you're going to start eating that broccoli now. Isn't that, you're the one that hates broccoli. Yeah, I hate broccoli. Why do you say that? Because it's nasty. It's nasty. It is not. I hate it. I hate, hate the snot. smell of it. It's not. The sight of it. Yeah. It's not. It looks like snot. It's not. No, actually, broccoli parmesan. Ooh. What? Broccoli. As a matter of fact, what do they have at Ruth Chris? They have um, broccoli all rotten, man. All rotten, you know, that you can either get bro yeah. the broccoli or the spinach all rotten. Mm. Mm, Just make man. sure you're downwind of me. I'll take that order. even before that young guy at uh, Woodbine the other day. I, I still can't get over the fact that I said that on here. It's just, you, you know, you make little of it because you're, you know, I think you're even a worse pervert than I am, which I didn't think was possible. What? The, 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 Not, okay. Look, we think stuff all day long, us men. Yes. You know, so you're gay, so you think, uh, you know, in another way. But, it's but I same. never thought of oh. reaching back and putting my hands up somebody's leg and grabbing their goods, man. Oh, that's you're that's a just tiger. not good. Well, you're maybe it would have been good. <laughs> maybe he might have enjoyed it and said, hey, get lost, bitch. What I was thinking about doing to that girl at Best Buy on Sunday. Oh, so, so I don't feel so bad now. Oh, man. It was br all brawless day in South Florida on this, Sunday. This was a really hot couple. Let me tell you that right now. Said so I, was, I was ready to just give up my machine, man, and say, okay, well, let's. At any rate, let, let's get off of that, because that's really embarrassing and humiliating. And like I said, I'm letting it all hang out right now. What, who cares? 
Who cares at this point in my life? Border agents found more than 1,200 pounds of cocaine valued at $40 million hidden in the floor of a truck full of broccoli, U.S. Customs and Border Pro uh, Protection said yesterday, in Far, Texas, P-H-A-R-R, -R. Far, Kafar. The seizure happened early Sunday afternoon at the Far International Bridge. Customs officers using an X-ray scan on a tractor trailer coming from Mexico noticed odd shapes in the floor of the trailer. A drug-sniffing dog alerted the scent of narcotics. The officers found a secret compartment carrying 500 brick-like packages of cocaine. The driver, 37-year-old Rio Bravo, Mexico, 37-year-old uh, from Rio Bravo, Mexico, I thought that's an interesting name, was not charged, but the tractor and trailer were seized at it. An investigation by immigration uh, was ongoing. He wasn't charged with anything. Well, I think it's normal to have a whole bunch like uh, 1,200 pounds of coke under the floor of broccoli. Why not? Make, make and it the taste dog, better, that's for sure. The dog sniffed it out. When in doubt, he sniffed it out. Oh, first it was tiny, now it's Josh. You know, it, it's really sad. It's enough to make you want to sit on the floor and put your head in your hands and cry how weak your calls are. And that, that's because look where they're coming from. I'm not saying that if we were in Paducah, Kentucky, or in Ishpeming, Michigan, the calls would be any better. But South Florida is notorious, in addition to which, in the middle of the daytime, being the unfriendly place it is, we're not just going to have people who are friendly and like me or the show and call in and schmooze because, you know, people, normal people, real people have a life in the middle of the day. They're working, they're in school, they're uh, busy uh, getting their slaily waxed, whatever they're doing. And so it's just, I I'm not saying, because I, I, I remember one day I sat down here, I said, I've never taken another call. Remember that? I do remember. And that, that was the correct uh, assumption to make. And then, of course, being weak. Being an emotional old queen, well, you know, you ought to give it a shot, blah, 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 it's uh, entertainment, and the audience loves it. Those of you who love it, uh, like I said, will give your numbers to those three or four guys. How's that? Oh, yeah. Doesn't that sound like a wiener? They could have, like, what were those old, uh, the party line things? Remember they used to run ads for it? Right. And everybody could get on the same phone line and Or, uh, or uh, better than that, well, look, since all this instant messaging is going on, we'll, we'll let them get on there to <laughs> IM. They can do the oh. AIM. They can do the Yahoo uh, Instant Messenger. They can all get on there together and have like a little circle uh, party. You know, when you type, hi, it just doesn't have the same oomph. No, it doesn't have the ring to it, you know. Although they do have the things there. In fact, uh, one of my buddies on there a few days ago, I told you, he got the microphone and was yeah. doing, a, doing a show, playing all my Boy. sounders back to me. You're a real groupie, Brandon. I'll tell you, he's okay. He's good. Good people. But uh, and, and then they can entertain themselves. They can all get their little uh, $10 microphones at Radio Shack, and they can get on there and shack up together in their little, uh, you know. In fact, they can also get on there with, with Shack. How's that? That's right. Me Shack to bed we go. I don't think so. Oh, scary thought. Probably for him, too, I'm sure. 586 votes on the poll. We've got 13 licked, and let's see, it's not even 1 o'clock yet. I bet you anything. I'll bet you uh, Joyce's life on it that by 1 o'clock we've got 1,300 votes. And I'll bet you her life on it again that by 2 o'clock, we got 4 million votes. The biggest name. Hold your breath, Joyce. This is Arnold. This is not a tumor. It's the one to two hour. Looking for love in a deceptive way. With somebody's picture stolen from my space. Blowing words out of my ass on a fake profile Trolling online Trolling online Trolling online Trolling online I could be good looking or at that hairy age Bi or gay or maybe just straight Look at all my gullible friends that I've got so far Trolling online. Trolling online. Trolling online. Trolling online. All the time, everybody lies online. You're gonna find it mainly guys who have no life. Trolling online. Trolling online. Trolling online. Trolling online. I'm giving hope to the desperate and lonely Even though I may be incredibly homely You'll never know it's my reason for nothing but lies Trolling online Trolling online Trolling online, Trolling online. I don't mind Just leave your home with both things Trolling online. Trolling 
It's 1101, or 101, <laughs> don't say that, 1101. Hot bologna, fry it up. Mm. I might just try that, I don't know. It'll it'll curl up, so you got to, you know, flip it routinely. And the bologna, too? Right. Flip your bologna, folks. <laughs> anyway, it's 101, we got the Mad Dog, too. Just a one-hour power hour today, but boy, next week, wow, wait till I get that schedule. I'm going to just, uh, oh, put it on the wall, nail it up there, lick it, admire it. Reverend Moon's anti-Obama agit prop writes Robert Perry on the smirking chimp. If you've wondered how, ever wondered how agit propaganda works, you might take a look at the latest case study from the Reverend Sun Myung Moon's media empire, a bogus story about Barack Obama attending a Muslim madrasa where he, when he was six years old, a smear that was then attributed to operatives of Hillary Clinton. The shrewdness of Moon's Inside Magazine story is that it hit two enemies with one anonymously sourced stone, a strategy of slime and divide, straight from the textbooks of a spy agency like the CIA. Only in this case, it's not the CIA planning black propaganda in a foreign publication to undermine some U.S. enemy. It's Moon using his media outlet subsidized by his mysterious foreign money to manipulate and distort the U.S. political process again. The Insight Madrasa story also turned out to be false. As CNN reported on January 22, the Indonesian school that Obama attended as a child was not a madrasa where sometimes extreme forms of Islam are taught, but rather a well-kept public school in an upper-middle-class neighborhood of Jakarta. The boys and girls wear school uniforms and are taught a typical school curriculum today as they were 39 years ago when Obama was a student there while living with his mother in Indonesia, reported CNN correspondent John Vows, who's had prior experience covering real madrasas. While most of the school students are Muslim, Indonesia is a Muslim country after all, Voss reported that the religious views of other students are respected and that Christian children at this school are taught that Jesus is the Son of God. The Son of hey, oh God! Nevertheless, the nasty inside story is sure to hurt Obama by pushing anti-Islamic hot buttons of many Americans. By citing Clinton operatives as the supposed source of the story, Moon's publication also played to the negative image of New York Senator as a ruthless politician who would sling mud at an opponent. Moon's media empire has planted similar stories in other U.S. presidential campaigns, publishing false or exaggerated stories that disparage Democratic candidates and help Moon's political favorites, especially in the Bush family. That's where the Bush family ought to be, on the moon. In fact, I got a message from me to the entire Bush family. You know what it is? I do. Cock-a-moon. That's what you know it. Mm-hmm. Cock-a-moon. In election 1988, Moon's Washington Times floated the story that Massachusetts Governor Michael Dukakis had psychiatric treatment, harming George Herbert Walker as Bush's Democratic opponent. In election 92, it bannered an accusation that Arkansas Governor Bill Clinton had worked for the KGB, again aiding the senior George Bush. In election 2000, when George W. Bush was seeking the White House, the Times pushed allegations that Vice President Gore was delusional. In election 2004, to boost the younger George Bush again, it trumpeted attacks on Senator John Kerry's patriotism. Once Moon's media empire surfaced these accusations, they would reverberate through the right-wing echo chamber and often into the mainstream press. Usually, the charges spotlighted a purported flaw so severe, such as mental instability or treason, that the Democrat would be disqualified in the eyes of many voters. Also, since it's difficult to prove a negative, mainstream news outlets often would treat the charges as a point of legitimate dispute, forcing the Democrat to wish a denial or refuse to comment. Sometimes TV pundits would add insult to the injury by critiquing how poorly the smear Democrats countered the attack. Moon's long record of engaging in this agit propaganda helps explain his value to the right, and especially to the Bush family. In turn, the Republicans have protected Moon from government investigations into his questionable sources of money, which finance both his media empire and his allied right-wing political organizations. The Korean cult leader spent more than $100 million a year just to subsidize his flagship newspaper, the Washington Times, according to a former uh, Moon insider. Longtime Washington Times reporter George Archibald recently put Moon's total investment in the newspaper at over $3 billion since its founding in 1982. Though Moon's finances remain murky, the evidence is overwhelming that he engages in international money laundering and has been closely tied to major crime syndicates in Asia and in South America. The latest attack on Obama is framed as a heartfelt desire to test out the credibility of the 45-year-old Illinois senator who identifies himself as a Christian and belongs to a church in Chicago. But Inside Magazine, citing supposed opposition research from the Clinton camp, contended that Obama actually was raised as a Muslim and is trying to keep that a secret from the American people. He was a Muslim, but he concealed it, a source supposedly close to the background investigation told Insight. The idea is to show Obama as deceptive. 
Insight uses no named sources in the article, nor did the magazine check out the facts about the school as CNN did. The article simply relies on its unnamed sources to claim that Obama was indoctrinated at a madrasa, a school for religious studies where boys are sometimes taught Islamic extremism, such as Saudi-based Wahhabism. Wahhabi. Although, the, although the background check has not confirmed that the specific madrasa Mr. Obama attended was espousing Wahhabism, the sources said his Democratic opponents believe this to be the case and are seeking to prove it, Inside Magazine claimed. Insight then said, the sources said the opponents are searching for evidence that Mr. Obama is still a Muslim or has ties to Islam. Mr. Obama attends services at Trinity United Church of Christ in Chicago South Side. However, he's not known to be a regular parishioner. More all the good in my eyes. After Moon's magazine published the Madrasa story, it quickly spread to the wider audiences of Rupert Murdoch's right-wing media outlets. Fox News and the New York Post, both owned by Murdoch, picked up and further disseminated the ugly stories that portrayed Obama as a secret Islamic militant and Clinton as a smear artist. To further the subliminal link between Obama and Islamic terrorism, the Post ran its story under the headline, Osama Mud Flies at Obama. Much as talk show host Rush Limbaugh has reveled in repeating the names Osama Obama again and again, all the better for his weak-minded listeners to connect Obama with Osama bin Laden. I wonder if he's popping a couple in between. Chewing them up. Many right-wing pundits also have insisted on using Obama's middle name, Hussein. Hussein. Oh, my God. Apparently to disqualify Obama by associating him with Saddam Hussein, though there's no connection. Hussein is a common and respected name in the Muslim world. Obama received his middle name from his father, who came from Kenya as a student. Can you believe it? Obama's mother was the daughter of a Kansas farmer. As the Obama Madrasa article spread through the right-wing media world, Fox News made sure the story was put in the harshest possible light. Hubze and Dreard at Fox News, as they say in Norway. Is that what they say, Hubze and Dreard? Mm-hmm. Hillary Clinton reported to be already digging up the dirt on Barack Obama, said John Gibson, author of Fox's The Big Story. The New York senator reportedly has outed Obama's madrasa past. That's right, the Clinton team reported to have pulled out all the stops to reveal something Obama would rather he did not know, that he was educated in a Muslim madrasa. For Obama's part, he wrote in his autobiography that after he had attended a Catholic school for two years, his Indonesian stepfather sent him into a predominantly Muslim school in Jakarta when he was six. This inconsequential fact apparently became the basis for Insight's claim that Obama was indoctrinated in a madrasa. The allegations are completely false. Obama spokesman Robert Gibbs told the Washington Post to publish this sort of trash without any documentation is surprising, but for Fox to repeat something so false, not once but many times, is appallingly irresponsible. Clinton spokesman Howard Wilson termed the Inside article an obvious right-wing hit job by a Mooney publication that was designed to attack Clinton and Obama at the same time. But the troubling backstory to this latest smear is the long history of Moon's publications injecting damaging propaganda against Democratic politicians in ways meant to confuse American voters. Viewed over the past quarter century, Moon's media empire has the distinct appearance of a well-designed covert operation that uses foreign money, possibly from illicit sources, to influence the U.S. political process in ways beneficial to Moon's political and financial goals. Like they said, Cox Ahoyce, you know, Reverend Moon. More of that religious fakery, baby. Snake oil and fakery. That's what the public loves. They just love it. They eat it up. How are we doing on the poll now? <clears throat> 1285. We got 1300 made in the shade. Isn't that great? Get out the lemonade. All right. I'll start squeezing. There's that whiny Susan Collins now for me. To, to be in me. Oh, oh, what are we? What are we talking about? We got religious crazy people. We got politicians who are nothing but a bunch of wimpy uh, crooks. I say everybody go out and have a good time. Enjoy life. That's my suggestion. Right. That's, my, that's my tip. Get laid a lot. Enjoy life. Do no harm. And uh, screw everybody. And don't listen to anything that uh, Joe Bell tells you. Just remember I told you that today. Both of you guys okay. do not listen to anything he tells you. Gotcha. I'm not saying he's a bad guy, but I'll leave it up to you to say that. Yeah. Today's show is filled with lots of fun ideas. Martha, can you show us what you're going to prepare for Super Bowl Sunday? Cats? <laughs> really? Makes you taste them. They're so delicious. Uh, you're, you're really going to make cat? Oh, yeah. Really? So I'm going to fold it in half this way. Uh, th this one's still alive. You're going to have to knock it out. or and That's easy to do. <laughs> Prison's really changed you, Martha. For the better, I mean. Now cut off the ends. Ooh. And we're going to bake this. Uh-huh. And the oven is turned to 375 degrees. Martha, it's not dead yet. I get my kicks from baking cats. <laughs> yeah, you look pretty today, Martha. That knife matches your eyes. Get me out of here. Stay tuned and enjoy the celebration. What the hell is this that I'm watching here on CNN? What, who is that? Yeah. Huh? 
Uh, All new episodes of The Real World Denver, Wednesdays at 10, only on MTV. My favorite show in the world now. You're getting What, what uh, was that? Real world can be interesting, depending on who, uh, what kind there of flesh they get. There were a couple of uh, dykes in the uh, hot tub there with mm. their tongue down each other's throat. I'm going to watch it then. There was one guy there that looked so interesting, I just about jumped through my little TV here, through my little citizen TV. Mm-mm-mm. Don't be talking that way again. Mm. Now sound like a real old pervert. That would be really bad. <laughs> oh, brother. Like I said, oh, God, that's good. Cricket captain caught with his pants down, speaking of perversion. Sydney, well, this wasn't perversion. It was like that story I told you about Derwood Carr and my PD in Albion, Michigan, a zillion years ago. What year would that have been? That was 1965. Woo! 42 years ago. God, are you old. 65. Albion, Michigan. And it was a big old house, like, out in, um, I don't know, like, out in the uh, hinterlands there. And uh, outside, I don't know how big Albion is. There's not that many people there. But, like, out in the middle of nowhere. Just a big old house. And the radio station was in the big old house. And the tower sat in the back, you know. What a great idea. Yeah, how unusual. Just like that big tower at KAT over there on a Bay Road. On Gay Road. Turns out Michael Clark's elevation from number four to number three in the Australian cricket lineup will be the butt of jokes for years to come. Rectum. Australian cappy R- Ricky Ponting surprisingly sent Clark into bat at number three against New Zealand on Sunday. Commentators wondered whether Ponting was trying to give Clark 25 more experience at the top of the order before World Cup in the Caribbean in March and April. Oh, did I tell you I was at World Cup in Berlin last summer? Mm. But anyway, oh, I, <laughs> I told you that for a week. I didn't go to no uh, soccer matches. I let my friends go there. And I, well. But teammate Mike Hussey said Monday that Ponting was meant to bat in his normal spot at the fall of the uh, first wicket, but was caught with his pants down. The first wicket. That's why they call it cricket. It was a quick toilet break, and he couldn't get his gear back on quickly enough, Hussey said. It was a bit of an unfortunate situation. I don't want to go into it too deeply, he said. I think you can ask him about it. I don't want to go into it too Rectum. deeply. Potting made just five runs batting in the unaccustomed position of number four. Clark 75 and Hussey's unbeaten 65 at number six. Got Australia to a two-wicket win in Sunday's one-day international day Sydney cricket ground. Scoring a 224 to eight in reply to New Zealand's 218. I don't have, I don't have any idea. All that, all that Australian and British sports, man, they can have it. Australia is qualified for next month's best of three final series with four wins and four matches. And the big cricket match. Do you, have you ever watched that? And, and uh, I'm like, aware of it. Yeah, they got those. I guess it's bats. like their version of baseball, and they have those stupid uh, bats. It looks like, like um, croquet and baseball, like a combination. Yeah, and they, and they belt that little ball, and it goes way out right. there, and they're running after it, and they're running around the wickets. And, it looks uh, uh, very silly. I think they crickets. spend more time spanking each other with those cricket bats than anything yeah, else. Yeah, they're spanking something. I'll tell you that. Now, what about Buddy Holly and the crickets? Remember that? That'll yeah, do the day. If I remember. 1299, the next vote gets us to 1300 on the poll. Let me tell you that right now. That is a real... In fact, remember what Chris said before, and he knows. He's the uh, radio maven now. He's the expert. He said if we get to 1300... We're number one! Damn it! Eat your heart out, said the kid Rosenkrieg Cranstein over there across the street. This is what really cracks me up about this market, is that there are people on the air who consider themselves like real broadcasters, who really believe that they're part of the... Industry as we once knew it. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it's just comical. It, it's idiotic. And, of course, we've got some of them on the air, too. I don't want to, you know. Right. There's, um, you know, management types that agree with that. Right. Oh, especially if they're talking about sports. Oh, yeah. That's all That's all you got to do. I mean, on any of these two stations, man, us and across the street. <laughs> Whatever you're driving, these budget has a bit of you. <laughs> there you go. Now, those are the kind of people. Oh, he's a broadcaster. He's a broadcaster. Wait, wait, wait. He really makes a lot of sense to me. <laughs> right. But you know something, like I said, the money is great. What am I getting all worked up about again today here? Details emerge about a possible terror threat. Uh Uh-oh. We don't want to get you nervous or anything like that. Because that would be bad. But mimicking the hijackers who executed the 9-11 attacks, insurgents reportedly tied to al-Qaeda in Iraq considered using student visas to slip terrorists into the U.S. to orchestrate a new attack on American soil. Lieutenant General Michael D. Maples, head of the Defense Intelligence Agency, I wonder if he's kin to Eddie Maple, recently testified that documents captured by the coalition forces during a raid of a safe house believed to be a house Iraqi members of uh, believed to house Iraqi members of Al Qaeda six months ago, believed that Al Qaeda in Iraq was planning terrorist operations in the USA. At the time, Maples offered little additional insight into the possible terror plot. ABC News, however, has learned new details of what remains a classified incident that's been dealt with at the highest levels of government. 
Sources tell ABC News that the plot may have involved moving between 10 and 20 suspects believed to be affiliated with al-Qaeda in Iraq into the U.S. with student visas, the same method used by the 19 al-Qaeda terrorists who struck American targets on 9-11. U.S. officials now require universities to closely track foreign nationals who use student visas to study in the U.S. University officials must report international students who fail to arrive on campus or miss class regularly. In August, the FBI and U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement alerted intelligence agencies and state and local law enforcement about 11 Egyptian students who had failed to report to their classes at Montana State University. The students were ultimately apprehended. Thanks, God. Say a bracha for that. Still, despite the heightened precautions, some security analysts fear that skilled terrorists handpicked because of their clean records and because they're carefully trained, could still slip in through an academic setting. Oh, my God. The plot was discovered six months ago, roughly the same time that Abu Musab al-Zarqawi, the leader of al-Qaeda in Iraq, was killed by coalition forces. Sources tell ABC News that the suspects involved in the effort to launch U.S. attack were closely associated with Zarqawi. The plan also came only months after Ayman the Paiman al-Zawahi, the al-Qaeda's number two, had requested that Zarqawi attempt an attack inside the U.S., eh? This appears to be the first hard evidence that al-Qaeda in Iraq was trying to attack us here at home, said ABC News consultant Richard Clark, former chief counterterrorism advisor on U.S. National Security Council. The plan was uncovered in its early stages, and sources say there's no indication that the suspects made it into the U.S. Officials also emphasize that there's no evidence of an imminent attack. No reason to panic, okay? Don't get, don't, let's get started with that again. And by the way, if you notice that we, I uh, guess we're all done with that red light, green light, the yellow light, all that crap. Oh, uh, yeah. Come on. Well, Let's get some lights dog going, and baby. Pony show anyway, you know? He's just like Chinooka all over again. Yeah. The hunt for suspect continues, however, and some fear that al-Qaeda recruits in Iraq could easily be redirected. Anyone willing to go to Iraq to fight American troops is probably willing to try to come to the U.S., Clark said. Just let him. Just let him give it a shot, huh? Let's see what this crap is you faxed me here. Oh, this is uh, not even from you. No, you didn't fax me anything. No, it's from my financial maven, okay? Oh, good. It is good, good stuff. He's good, good people. I have no complaints. I'm doing just fine, just fine. I got a couple of bucks put away. So let's talk about Neil's will for a couple of minutes. <laughs> oh. You should uh, hold auditions. Yeah, a little singing and a little dancing. I got news for you. I'm going to do. I, I was telling a friend of mine here the other night. I said I'm going to do whatever the hell I want to do. How's that? I don't need any advice. What a great idea. I don't need anybody to tell me who I care about, who I'm. I'm going to do whatever the hell I want to do. I'm not going to ask anybody's permission. I'm just. I'm just going to do it, and then when I croak, oh, surprise, here's uh, 50 bucks or whatever, you know. Maybe you'll get an envelope. <laughs> Maybe Chris will get an envelope. Well, uh-huh. nothing in it, but an envelope. <laughs> Other than the government, this is our poll today. We've got 1,303 votes. Not too bad for an old fart who has shut that phone down for an uh, indeterminate amount of time. Maybe the rest of these two years. I don't know. Just listen. Remember what I told you. Remember the day I told you it's January 23, 2007. And uh, we're, we're going to do a, the show the way we see it. That's it. And clearly, although when you're on, of course, you want to take all those great calls. Oh, yeah. Well, you will. I will. So they can wait for you. Mm-hmm. There you go. Build up all that Save enthusiasm. That's right. Keep a notebook. 1306, other than the government, who is effing you the hardest right now? My property insurance company, 344. The oil company is 195. My health insurance company, 134. My employer slash boss, 102. The media, 64. My power company, Florida Flutter and Loot, 58. And that was definitely a setup call. I go, oh, I love FPL. I've only lost the mm. power six day. Yeah, right. Go to hell, man. He must live at the power plant. Yeah, now he's got his head up somebody's ass who works for FPL. My spouse, 53. I hate this poll, 47. I'm here 3.5%. See, the people who aren't the callers, they're, they're okay. They're the good folks. My credit card company, 45. My homeowners and or condo association, 43. The drug company is 40. My drug dealer, 36. My ex-spouse slash partner, whatever, 32. My cable satellite dish provider, 26. My girlfriend or boyfriend, 20. Or is that boyfriend? My internet service provider, 20. My bank, 16. My kids, 14. My doctor, 6. My realtor, 5. My preacher, Rabbi uh, Schmendrick, uh, 5. And my stockbroker is still Sultan Uno. 1,306 votes on the poll. Well, once we got to 13, then we crossed the bridge. 1,308. They're coming in like in little chunks now, in little tiny chunks. I'm going to try that fried bologna. All right. Because I think it was most appropriate that you started. I don't know how we get on the Well, you were talking about liking bologna, and I'm not I fond was. of it unless it's fried. Then uh, then it's okay. Now, how about, oh, this, this will really get you going. How about fried bologna with a slice of Kraft uh, cheese on it? 
Or, or you could put some good cheese on it. It would be better. And, and as opposed to that craft cheese product, I might have like a little bit Get of cheese some in it. Borden pasteurized processed cheese food. <laughs> it's much better cheese. Okay, I'm going to go out and buy some Bordens with Elsie the Moo Cow on it or today. I'm going to try my. Would be good. I'm going to see if it works on my bologna. Howard David's a bitch. Open up the refrigerator. The refrigerator. Gonna make a sandwich from my bologna. Bacon, lettuce, and tomato. Whatever that means, I haven't got any idea. With I haven't hmm? played it in a long time. Well, no. it's my bologna. Bologna. Okay. Do you know anybody who says bologna? No. I have been in Bologna, by the way. I have been in Bologna, Miami. Italy. You've ever been in Bologna? No. We stayed in a hotel where the, uh, they were doing construction out there in the street. It was The construction was going on morning, noon, and night so loud that made your eardrums just about burst. Well, there's my buddy Rob Marciano there on CNN doing the weather. From a distance, he looks pretty good. Up close, uh, I don't know. And I don't think I want to know. All those rumors about Rob Marciano. See, this is the one thing, like you always say, why do people get excited about this one or that one? Because they're on television, dummy. That's like, right. Uh, like, uh, what's his name? Mr. Jensen told Howard Beale. Because mm -hmm. you're on television, dummy. Why me? <laughs> See, at least, at least with George, I got one person out there who, A, understands the movie, B, liked it, and, uh, you know. Crime is mad as hell, or I'm not going to take this anymore. Oh! I'm so tried to, uh, trying to convince people what a great flick that is. I, well, what's to convince? I mean, it just is, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like uh, Rocky Road ice cream. You know, have to I got to admit, it, people. The, uh, the first time I saw it when I was really young, it kind of went over my head. Yeah. You know, a lot of things. That, uh, is that what you're saying? It went over Chris's head and also went over uh, Josh Cordes' head? Well, it's uh, kind of hard no, to understand it when you're sleeping in the middle of it. I sent you a picture of Chris watching that work, as a matter of fact. You did? Yeah, to your uh, real email address. Oh, I don't, I don't even look at that anymore. Well, I know, but nevertheless. I don't have any of my buddies who, uh, e who use That's that. The, uh, I, I got, listen. Best way to send files. Let me tell you something right now. Talk about an overgrown child. I've got so many instant messaging things going right now. Yeah, I know. I've got so many, uh, you know, let's see. MySpace mail problem. Oh, that, that's old. That's ancient. Yeah. That was last week. Eric was trying to be helpful on there. Scheduled maintenance. Well, what does that mean? Scheduled maintenance. We may be down for a short period of time early tomorrow morning. What day was that? Mm. Well, that, that's also days ago. Where is George's thing here? Our man Chris. Oh, there it is. There's the picture of uh, Chris during the show. God, are you fat? <laughs> Jesus Christ, are you fat? <laughs> and ugly. <laughs> No, why would you say Does that? Does that mean I'm out of the will? <laughs> you were never in it, sweetheart. You ain't got a chance. God. Plus, you look about 100 years old in that picture. You look like an old, fat slop. And you're laying back just snoozing. He's not watching. Oh, I see. That's supposed to be a joke. Yes. He's watching the network. He's in the snooze position, in the crew snooze. Well, that's cute. Let's see. Is there anything else on here that's kind of interesting? Oh, uh, uh Whatever. Okay, whatever that says. I don't. I don't use that email. I, oh, I I've got two other emails. I got the seventy-five thousand instant messengers on there. Like I said, I was kept on there for like five hours last night until I virtually almost passed out. I'll tell you one thing. I sure slept good. God Almighty. Ba -ba 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 back and forth. But uh, that's the way it goes. Jeff Cohen, not the one you're thinking of, many of you, but one we read his articles all the time on the Smirking Chimp from Jeff Cohen's blog. Do I have time before the break? Yeah, I do. Can independent media stop the corporate media's Hillary bandwagon? See, I know this is a story you'd like. Good. You've got your fingers and legs crossed. It says, prominent pundits seem ecstatic over Hillary Clinton's entry into the presidential race just after, days just after Barack Obama's media-created candidacy became official. Media talking heads are having so much fun lately, they don't seem to notice that our political system is failing to address ever-worsening problems, social, environmental, physical, and imperial. Indeed, our country's political decline in recent decades has been abetted by the decline in mainstream media. The same media outlets that were complicit in the disastrous Iraq war are bent on turning politics into an insular celebrity club in which only they get to anoint frontrunners. 
If the torch of leadership passes from Bush 1 to Clinton 1 to Bush 2 to Clinton 2, it'll be a loss for our country, but a victory for a corrupt Beltway press corps that abhors fresh ideas, especially those that challenge its power and privilege. It was a frightened national press corps that vilified the Netroot supporters of Democratic outsider Ned Lamont in defense of pro-war war horse Jew Lieberman. For the coming election season to be fact-based and reality-based instead of just power-based, independent media online and off will have to play a bigger role in shaping the debate and correcting the record. For example, a recent San Francisco Chronicle News report headline, Obama emerges as Clinton's rival for Democrat left, asserted that Hillary Clinton was rightly regarded as the left's most influential voice inside the now-revered Clinton White House. Widely regarded? Actually, progressives see Hillary Clinton as having been consistently wrong on the war and a host of other issues, especially trade. Her absurdly bureaucratic health care proposal in 1993, shaped by and for big insurance companies, was a slap in the face of unions, Congress members, and grassroots forces who built a movement for simple nonprofit national health insurance. In fact, enhanced Medicare, uh, in effect, enhanced Medicare for all. She helped set back the cause of universal coverage for years. And far from being revered, many Democratic activists see the Clinton era as one of decline in which Democrats lost their strong majorities in the U.S. Senate, U.S. House governorships, and state legislatures. It's simple math for crying out loud. Forget it! <laughs> The 2008 presidential election is shaping up as a test of the power and capacity of new independent media versus old conglomerate-dominated media, and a test of grassroots network politics versus corporatized democratic politics. In 2004, new media network forces weren't quite strong enough to win. The Internet-fueled and funded Howard Dean insurgency caught the press corps and democratic elites off guard, but they rallied to savage the then frontrunner in the weeks before the Iowa caucuses as hot-headed, inexperienced, and unelectable. Those weeks saw many Iowa caucus scores move from Dean to allegedly electable candidates like Kerry, alleged. This month in Memphis, more than 3,000 independent journalists, critics, and media activists joined members of Congress at the National Media Reform Conference to strategize on how to build more democratic, diverse, independent media. Not surprisingly, Hillary Clinton, who's been historically close to media conglomerates and was endorsed for Senate by Rupert Murdoch, was not present. Only one presidential candidate came to Memphis, Representative Dennis Kucinich, who now chairs the House Government Reform and Oversight Committee on Domestic Policy, with jurisdiction over the FCC. There was disappointment in the no-show of presidential candidate John Edwards, who has some of the Dean Thunder this year with his Internet-savvy campaign calling for a war on poverty and withdrawing troops from Iraq. This election season will be fascinating to see whether blogs and independent media and grassroots Democrats will be able to counter, as Dean almost did in 2004, the ferocious assaults and clichés of corporate media. In much mainstream media discussion 12 months before the Iowa caucuses, the campaign's already been narrowed to a two-person race with Clinton way ahead of Obama. But a different story emerges when Democrats are polled in crucial early primary and caucus states where voters are beginning to pay attention. Edwards is ahead in Iowa. Obama's ahead in New Hampshire. The race is certainly not over, nor is it a two-person race. My advice to mainstream journalists, Jeff says, if you love covering horse races, transfer to the sport pages. If you want to cover only celebrities, switch to the gossip pages. If you're obsessed with how candidates look or dress, try the fashion pages. As for how these presidential aspirants would govern, I'm counting on independent media. The public needs to hear Kucinich's step-by-step plan to end the war in Iraq, and Edwards needs to be asked, after the first 50,000 troops are withdrawn, what's the next step? As for Clinton and Obama, they're vaguer, the vaguer their rhetoric, the more they seem to dazzle the establishment media, not unlike Chance the Gardener in being there. It will be up to independent media to decipher their actual positions and the political financial interests of their funders and advisors, says Jeff Cohen. Maybe time for a little pizza. What do you think? Oh, for me! <laughs> what are we going to do without Mo? Do, 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 do. He lives on. Does he really? In those Anybody bits? heard him over there on... Uh... Oh, and, and by the way, remember we had that uh, one call, another jackass about man collar? Oh, man collar's got... He had like a point one. A 0.1 in this uh, fall book. Mm -hmm. I had a, tremen a tremendous impact in the market. I heard something about uh, your favorite boy, Mo, recently. Yeah. One of our illustrious, I think both two of our uh, reporters ran into him at the Heat game recently. Yeah. Mo's still listening to the show. To this show? Yes. What well, do you know, Mo? He made a comment about how uh, we're still playing some of the Mo bits and, you know, don't we have anything else that we can play or something? Do, 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 do. No, that's all we got. In fact, after the break, it's going to be more intensive than ever before. Mandage, I f them I'll have you know, I know what I'm talking about here. 
Every morning at the condo, I take the elevator down, and on my way to the car, when I pull my folding basket out, I grab a free condo paper. Yeah, the toys are back in town. The toys are back in town. The toys, the toys. The toys are back in town. The toys, the toys. The toys, the toys. The toys, the toys. I said the boys are back in town. Why, you little... Oh, my God, hello, you sport old fool. I know everything that's going on in that news. Why, I even know all the new Mahjong rules. I'm hip to the jive, Daddy-O. Too bad you're going back today. It's a better show when I take your place. I know I ain't no way to play with But when they drop my voice, we'll jam it away. Your little smoothie? <laughs> the toy, 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 the All right. It's been brought to my attention that uh, your ratings are dying now. Well, I don't want to show you what a big asset I was to you and how. You thought you could find somebody good enough to fill my baggy pants? It ain't easy. <laughs> there ain't no chance I'll ever be coming back. <laughs> Outside of considering a lucrative uh, contract. Hmm? If you want to know what will save you from shutting that transmitter to down... That's easy. <laughs> sure. All you need is mouth. All you need is mouth. All you need is a shout. I don't know. I'm not sure. 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 A piece of old time slot only got you to gain. Despite that, my ratings have bottomed out in this tank. Which radio has the revolving doors with a gay symbol horse? And squeaky shut. All you need is now. Now see here. All you need is now. All you need is a show. It's a show. It's a show. It's a show. <laughs> what are you going to do, fire me, huh? Like old times. So does that come as any surprise to you? Um, None at all. That Mo is still listening? You know, I mean, in between Mahjong matches and um, Shuffleboard. Yeah. But even when he was on the station, that was his problem. He listened just around the clock, almost every waking moment. And this is a problem, Mo. This was really bad for your morale and everybody else's, too. And, of course, it wouldn't have made any difference because you're a miserable old SOB and everybody hated you like poison. I want to give you uh, an update correct. of what took place just now off the air because I think it's important you hear this. Howard just called the radio station, Howard David, who I get along with great, I thought. He called me and <laughs> saying I was trying to stir it up. My point back to Howard is don't listen. Listen to 101.5. Let me see, what age group? 101.5 for Howard, maybe 102.7, some easily listening Love music so you could focus on your wife and your family and the grandkids instead of listening and always calling the radio station. He's becoming Howard the caller, like Howard from Boca. Howard from Boca. It's like, you know, it's okay. So anyway, he's, he's listening. So I just wanted to get the message out. And don't call my show, too, just for a record. Don't call off the air because I don't want to talk to you. And uh, I don't want to hear you on the private line. Congratulations. You know the private line number. That's great. But don't call because you're not coming on this show. You can got, you've got your three hours, five to eight, Monday through Friday. You can talk all you want, but you're not coming on this show. And we'll leave it at that. All right? I got nothing against you. You seem like a decent person. And I know you've been getting a, taking a big hit on the radio station right. from everybody else, but it's over. Me and you, done. Jason, you're on QM. We don't have any National Guardsmen because they're all fighting a war in Iraq right now. Not the National Guard. Pardon? Not the National Guard. No National Guard in Iraq? Not, not, there's no National Guard. Uh, no. Of course not. 
<laughs> oh, I thought you were going to play the, the bald spot caller. Uh, no, wait. What was that? The doctor. The doctor, so I can play the ticker. Oh. The uh, doctor that performed the surgery on uh, Jay Fiedler's thumb. Mm -hmm. Isn't he the same doctor that performed the uh, procedure on your toupee? Um, it's the doctor who performed the surgery. Let's think about that. What's his name? Why? <laughs> Fiedler's doctor? Yeah. I don't know where he was. Who, who, I don't know who he was. George Caldwell? I'm not sure. I I'm not sure where my doctor, favorite part is. Joe I'm is not sure. sure I know. Is. You go to Holy Cross, you almost lose it. <laughs> oh, you can just see it. Sure. Well, bottom line is that I don't, the doctors can't tell how long Jay's going to be out. No, you're not, you're not sure. Somewhere at least a month could be up to eight weeks. Somewhere in there. Wally on the wall with you on QM. All right. <laughs> Boy, you're bad, man. You are No wonder he wanted to get your ass fired. Yeah, he did the, he did the uh, right thing. He backed off. You know, and if I hadn't uh, driven that wedge between the two of you, that is we'd be golfing together right now. Right. We'd be out there in our lime green pants mm -hmm. right now with our rain catcher hats. That's right. We'd be out there. Uh, those balls. Go golfing it up a storm. Well, I'll tell you one thing. He sure is the Dingleberry man. I'll tell you that. Make no mistake about it. All right. Let's take a look at that pool here. We're almost out of here already. And, and see... I, I I know this sounds crazy. I don't need to take those stupid calls. There isn't any point to it. Oh, come on. <laughs> there is no... Look at that. It's already up to 28, man. It's going to be all the way to 32 today. Oh! And uh, just a little bit of snow left over from Monday. Not bad. And today's the 23rd of January. And believe you me, I'm not complaining, but I'm just telling you, all these articles about global warming, I'm living it. I'm living it. And no complaints, like I said. How much we got? We got 13.43. I bet you if Chris, if Chris wouldn't have been snoozing like that, boy, I'll tell you, that, that was not good that you sent me that picture, you know? That was I mean, I don't, break. look, who am I to be telling people about you know, what they look like? I mean, I'm as grotesque as they come, but, well, no, not as, there are worse. Yeah, I there think are. Chris, you might be one of them. Picture. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. When I was your age, I looked better than that. Not that I looked, well, what difference does it make? Lose some weight, will you please? Yes. That's what I'm doing. You lost 55 pounds, you said? 35. 35. Well, all right. About 30, fine. About 30. Well, that's good. And we're going to really, uh, we're going to get you down to, well, how much did you weigh? 255, you said? Yeah. And you lost 35, so that means you were 290. Oh, boy. I never weighed that much. And you're how tall? 5'1"? Five, 5'10". One? Five, <laughs> I'm not George. You're not a midget? Other than the hey, government, no. who is effing you the hardest right now? That's a poll. Don't, look, you'll get used to it. I pick on everybody, okay? You're probably uh, a really no good problem. guy. You, you're probably a good guy, although George says... He's a very anyway, good guy. He's a good guy. You're fine with us. And, of course, uh, Josh was starting to get a little porky, too. He kept denying it, but I saw those pictures. In fact, I don't know why everybody and their brother was using his fake profile on the uh, MySpace. I don't know what that's all about. Other than the government... Who, in fact, if I was going to use somebody's profile and try to be like a, a honeybee trap, uh -huh. that's the one I would use. He looked pretty damn good. But My property insurance fake. company... I beg your pardon? That looked too fake. That was a problem. Oh. Well, why didn't you tell me that then? My property insurance company, 353. The oil company is 203. My health insurance company, 139. My employer boss, 104. The media, 64. Uh, my power company, Florida Plunder and Loot, 61. My spouse, 53. Mm -hmm. My credit card company, 49. I hate this bull, 48. Homeowners and or condo uh, commandos, 44. Drug company is 41. My uh, drug dealer, 37. My ex sponsor partner, 33. My cable satellite dish provider, 28. Girlfriend or boyfriend, 23. My internet service provider, 20. My bank, 16. My kids, 15. My doctor, 6. six. My realtor, 5. My preacher, uh, Schmendrick uh, Getschke, 5. And my stockbroker, still, I've, what is it, stockbroker? Stockbroker, whatever the hell, some a quack, only one. Oh, God.
Oh, well, I'll give it to you. She wants to get high. She wants to drink and smoke and dance dirty all night. She is a sandwich. Real quick. Oh, yeah. My daughter's skinny. Ooh, skinny like a skeleton. Is there anything you want to do about it? No.